say hi, babe. How you doing? Um, you know, want to find out what your uh, big deal is. Just trying to find out, you know, what your, your, your problem is, you know? I mean, my name's Andra. My real name is. And, you know, you being on Andrea Loop and all, I'm, I'm just curious, you know, is, is there something I can do for you? Is, is there some kind of conversation we can have? Please, by all means, you see my number on your, your phone. Why don't you give me a call back, babe, before this gets any worse for you? Get me? All right. Look, guys, I'm sorry. I don't mean to kind of roll in quick on this, but I kind of have to because it's the first of the month and we veterans get paid today. So I've had a busy day, but I wanted to stream with you. Everybody else is streaming. Going to try to get in. Show you what I got. Give my opinion. So it's here. And if you're watching the replay, I'm not going to do a long intro. Let's just get started. It is 2-1 of 2023, February 1st, broadcasting from the East Coast of the glorious United States of America. I'm your host, Uni Rock. Today's topic is Bullhorn Betty doxed Nonsense's phone number and address from Molly Golightly. As you probably heard last night with my emergency mobile live stream and Alden left her a voicemail from a Google phone number to try to make sure that if she calls the police, it'll be a little harder for them to track down what happened. Not only threatens her with location information, which I'll explain in a second, but also make sure at the end, as you just heard, and I'll play it again, that was just the intro, threatens her directly. And I will break all of this down piece by piece as quickly as possible to try to give you a good, uh, this is going to be a quicker Unirock live stream. Now, so basically what happened last night, you guys might have been in the stream, you might not have been. We were streaming. Nonsense was, uh, I think, done streaming from what I remember, right? Um, and out of nowhere, we noticed that Nonsense goes live with the most interesting or crazy title ever, which was uh, Bullhorn Betty leaves. I don't remember if it was a voicemail or a threatening voicemail or what it was. Um, so we're like, no way. And I jump into discord and I tag everybody and I'm like, what is going on? Because this must have happened as we were ending our stream. And I, yeah, lo and behold, here it is. Uh, let's rewind here. This is a uh, forgotten whispers did a good video. Everybody's done videos on this. You can find everybody's opinion. And I, I kind of like hope that you'll go through and listen to everybody's opinion. Because it's good to do that, especially when Betty has already gone live or done a video, and we're going to watch it in a second, basically saying that she didn't do anything wrong. Then we're going to talk about Molly and Betty trespassing, going back to the location, and the locals putting up a no trespassing sign and letting them know directly, do not come here. Get out of here. We don't want you here. And of course, Betty, you know. What happens when that happens with these tragedy pimps? <laughs> we all know when that happens, Betty starts to yell. You can't tell Betty the truth. You can't tell her that you don't want her there, right? Because why are we demonetized again? Good Lord. It has to be the thumbnail. But you know what? If I have to be demonetized because that thumbnail, that's the best thumbnail I've ever made. That is the best thumbnail I have ever made in my history on YouTube. So if I have to be demonetized for a little bit until YouTube reviews this video, I'll go ahead and take it. I will go ahead and take it because I'm, I'm telling you, I don't know, man, something about, uh, I sat down and started in Photoshop making the, the thumbnail and I just inspiration took me over. Also, we've got some memes. We got some really good memes. Unfortunately, with everything that's going on today, I didn't get to make you one. But we will have more memes for you tomorrow. We are live. Most likely no notification. So here's a share. I don't know if one of the mods will repost that we're live in Discord so that it'll tag everybody. You know, I think I'm going to start a locals. I'm going to start either a locals or something like Nate the Lawyer has because it notifies the people that want notifications every time. 
all the time. Nothing will stop it. So I'm going to do that. But make sure you know that we also stream in tandem to Twitter. So if you turn on my live notifications or my streaming notifications on Twitter, it will make sure that you get a notification for my streams. Now, or you can just watch the replay. It's not a big deal. Let's play this voicemail for you. Play Nonsense's reaction and then go over and play Betty making excuses. Basically making excuses. Uh, just wanted to call you. Say hi. And, and I know every creator on the planet is making content right now and giving their opinion. And that's why I'm going to be quick today. Hey, babe, how you doing? Um, you know what? So Betty calls uh, a stranger who she's never talked to. And here's the weird thing, man. Well, we do know that Betty, uh, Nonsense said that Betty drunk dialed her, and I do believe that that happened, uh, because uh, if you watch, Molly and Betty go live, and they're almost sitting there, they're confirming that they've done this, and they're being cocky about doing it while they're on stream. What I was about to tell you is, when the neighbors shooed them out of the uh, community, Betty went to start yelling, Molly interrupted her and said, don't yell. Say a prayer, calm down. Because they were in Molly's neighborhood, pretty much. They were in Molly's hometown. Molly said that this location was just miles away from her. And so if Molly has a location that is close to her home, where the same police precinct, same area. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Same precinct, same area. That's when she'll stop people from yelling. That's when she'll say, don't yell at him. Don't, don't make a scene. Don't do anything. Because the police in that area, Molly's area, already know all about Molly Golightly and her friends. How hypocritical is that? You could go to everyone else's and go look at all. You know, you guys have all seen the videos. But if you're new here, you can go look at all the videos of Molly and Betty going into other people's communities. And they get bullhorns, blast music. Uh, they, they, they play a victim's voice on their car speakers and blast it. They put laundry baskets in people's yards. But when they're in Molly's community, you can't do that. Nah. Nah. Oh, it's almost like she understands how disrespectful it is. It's almost like she gets it. It's almost like this is all just a big act from them. And that these tactics, leaving voicemails like this, is a way to intimidate criticizers knowing that it's going to affect their pocketbook. The people that are funding Molly and Betty, they don't realize what these people are doing. They get caught up in it, and once they just realize the truth, they are immediately out, and that's why they're doing these voicemails, trying to stop people. I find out what your uh, big deal is. So she's trying to find out what her big deal is. Well, no. Actually, you're lying. Um, you are a pathological liar, as I always say, and you are a cyber stalker and a harasser, and that's why you called her and left this voicemail, because if you wanted to know what she thinks, you could just listen to her channel. There was, You're lying. There's no reason to call her. There's no reason to get her phone number and call her like this. You could have done... You could have communicated with her through normal means. You could have reached out to her professionally. And it's what's funny about this is her defense is, ah, we're professionals. Kick the. There are people actually going into Betty's live chat and calling her out for this. Both people that don't like her and people that do like her, ironically. So she was blocking them and going on a big crazy spree about how they're not being an adult. You have to, even though Betty, I have a video I'm going to play for you in just a minute where Betty doesn't even have to be respectful when she's at these properties she doesn't even have to be respectful at these properties or act like an adult but if you go into her live chat you got to be respectful it's rules for thee but not for me she don't got to follow the rules that she makes for everybody else she can do anything she wants behave any way she wants she don't get kicked out of her chat she don't get kicked off her channel but if you go into her chat and just type something she don't like or you criticize her, you're done. Thank you, Tina. You guys are awesome. Thank I'm you. I'm just trying to find... Yeah, adults don't choke people when they get mad. And, and you know, you saw my thumbnail, right? The last thing that nonsense ever saw. It's a meme. The thumbnail's a meme. I'm not being serious. But, but it is a meme. The me when you make a meme, if you know what you're doing, if you're a meme lord, if you're a comedian like me, if you're comedic... You will make memes that echo a funny part of reality. And the only way to be able to cope with the fact that the, the strangler is actually threatening nonsense is to make a joke about it. And that's what my thumbnail is. 
If it was Betty's choice, ask yourself this question. If Betty could get away with it unscathed, you think she'd do it? Oh my God, Peggy. Peggy, you are too generous and I love you. Thank you. You're very much appreciated. All of you are, whether you don't know or not. Make sure you hit subscribe. Make sure you hit like. Let's get into this. Next up. Find out, you know, what your, your, your problem is. You want to find out what her problem is. I know what her problem or her commentary, her issue. I know what her issue is because she says it on her channel. You are one of the most pathological, dishonest people that anyone on the, on the whole internet has ever seen, Betty. And, and if anything should bother you, I know it doesn't bother you to choke people. So it doesn't bother you to um, threaten people. I know it. But you know what I think does bother you? Your inability to tell the truth at all, ever. Your inability to actually speak honestly. Because there's a reason people lie. They lie because they're trying to hide their true actions, hide their true selves. You know, I mean, my name is Andra. My real name is. And, you know, you being on Andrea Loop and all, I'm, I'm just curious. There it is. I didn't know what that meant. Like, I'm sitting here and I'm like, what does that mean? You being on Andra Loop and all, what does that mean? It's an address. So just so that you understand what she just said there, it's hard to understand at first because you just can't believe this is happening. Can't believe, I don't care if we were people that own businesses, if we owned coffee shops and we were all mad at each other or something because, you know, nonsense is getting everybody to go to her coffee shop instead of ours, right? I don't care what the thing is, but you don't call people and leave them these kind of threatening voicemails, especially if you go and you try to say to yourself, okay, Maybe they're just joking around. Let's go see. And you look up to see whether this person has a propensity of trespassing. A pro oh, they trespassed yesterday. Do they have a propensity of being unable to control their anger? Oh, my God. They just couldn't control their anger yesterday or this morning. Do they have a propensity of hurting people in a very extreme way? Well, we know for a fact she's done that many times. And one of them was years ago. But still, that's the fact that she's capable of it. Yeah, you, you should protect yourself. People get hurt because they, when people get threatened off the internet, the majority of the time, they don't get hurt. But if you've seen the news, I don't know, maybe if you're in a true crime community or something, then I think we can all admit people do these kind of things. So when you get threatened, the reason why people, the reason why some people go like, oh, well, whatever, is because they, they don't expect the person who threatened them to have a record of battery to have a record of beating people or choking people or forcing themselves into people's homes through through doors that have been locked or you know going to the front door no I'm going through the back door because when she choked that guy she went not through the front door she went through the back door she went in and started breaking all of his stuff then most likely when he was trying to like shoo her out or stop her he didn't hit her or anything didn't touch her she knocked him on the ground, punched his teeth loose, no joke, and choked him till he almost died. And again, the guy could have died if the circumstance was even slightly different. I have to remind you of this. I have to. She threatened nonsense. So I have to remind you that if she would have squeezed a little bit harder and broke his trachea, that's all it takes to kill somebody. You don't choke people because you really can kill people much easier than what a lot of people think. You just don't do it. You know, is there stuff that I can do for you? Now, remember, she just said that Andrea Loop thing, and you just heard it, and Nonsense talked about it, and because Nonsense, after the, she was doxxed by Betty and Molly, said what it is, because she already knows it's out there, so whatever. That is an old street address of not Nonsense, her mother. Okay? Her mother. But, but that's not why Betty said it. Boston Nick last night, we were talking on Queen Bee's panel. You guys are awesome, by the way. Love talking with you. Hope we talk a lot more. Thank you for having me on. I tried to tell the peeps to come over. I hope they did. I hope people subbed. I hope that uh, these communities keep going because you guys are hilarious. You're welcoming. You're funny. You're fun. I appreciate you. I don't know what else to say, but I appreciate you. Let's do it more, okay? Got to get you guys over here sometime for a conversation. We got to. Okay, anyway. 
The thing is, when she just said here, what Betty just said, I agree with Nick. Um, Nick was Nick has a theory because bet because what Betty did was on purpose state an old address of her mother's. Now, what this proves, this proves it 100%. Betty cannot, you know, backtrack out. It proves that she heavily docks nonsense, that she extremely docks nonsense. It proves that she stalked nonsense and nonsense's family. Betty can't sit there and say this is harassment or defamation for me to tell you this. Betty has gone live this morning to admit she did all of this. She didn't necessarily admit to the things I'm saying, like the, the, the things that are proven by this, of course, but she did admit to calling. And then if you just listen to what she said on the call, how did she know her mother's address from 20 years ago? Or, you know, from a very long time ago. I'm just estimating 20 years ago. Um, because she has ran, she has doxxed nonsense in every way and every means possible. And I bet she's tried to do it to me. I bet she's tried to do it to everybody out there. Heels in the air, anyone she can, you know. And that is what that binder was. You want to sit here and tell me that binder is about people that stalk you? Oh, hell no. You said it was about YouTubers. And, and how do you have that many YouTubers that you're tracking? Because you're tracking your criticizers. Not your stalkers. Is, is there some kind of conversation we can have? Now, she drunk dialed. She drunk dialed. So when people say Betty wouldn't do that, how do you know? When she drinks, when she gets in the state of mind that she was in with Molly, she can't control herself. That means that no one can predict what Betty can do like no one could predict what Koberger did. Nobody can predict what any of these tragedies are. That's the thing. And this is a true crime community. This isn't a community that weaves baskets, like I always say. This is not a community that weaves baskets. What that means is they study these types of crimes to a high degree, so they know the weight of their threats. Betty understands that she is putting that thought into the minds of the people that she threatens. It's not some childish teenager swatting or doxing somebody because they don't understand. They're actually threatening somebody across the gambit in, in the way that they're threatening them. This is an adult. This is someone who claims to be lawyer levels of educated, detective levels of educated, media or reporter levels of educated. This is also why I constantly say that they're not those things because you can't be doing this while saying that you are following the etiquette, following the, um, I'm using the wrong word, but the, um, ethics of being a lawyer or, or and then just in case navy does jump in here let me go ahead and share my screen so it's already ready for him please by all means you see my number on your your phone why don't you give can't me a call back truth. babe you can't even tell the truth you can't even tell the truth that wasn't your number it's a google number that is a google number it's not your number a google number Sometimes a Google number will ring to the to the uh, phone that you have it connected to, right? But that's not her number. That's not like her cell phone when she's out running around. That's like an, a line that you set up with your... A Google number is a number that you set up with your computer so that you can have a, a phone number in your office that if people call it, it'll ring to your computer. You can set them up to go to your phone, to go to a device, but the point is that's not your phone number and you know it. It's not like you called her on your cell phone or something, gave out your number. Why do you get to dox all of her information, but you're trying to be secretive by using a Google number with your information there, their, uh, their, uh, the, 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 uh, the, the Florida Strangler? Why? Why? Dude, that thumbnail, I'm sorry, but, you know, I, I, I hope I've earned your subscription just because of the artistic detail that I put into this. The concept, right? That if Betty could do what she wanted to do, this would be the last thing that nonsense saw. If Betty had her way, this is that last thing. And there's this scene. I'm going to make a meme out of this scene, thanks to Doc, Misha, uh, from Wild Wild West with Will Smith. And they take a man's head because they say that there's this old theory Doc told me about. That the last thing that a person sees is burnt into their retinas. And if you could figure out a way to read the retina of their eye of a dead person, you could see the last thing they saw before they passed away. 
right? And if you hook, like, if nonsense passed away and we had a machine that could see the last thing she ever saw, this is what would come up on the screen. Now, this is terrifying, and I'm sorry I have to scare you like this. This image is so terrifying. It's a fake image. It's a meme. It's a thumbnail, but it's it represents a possible reality so much because of the behavior of Molly and, and Betty. And that's why the meme is actually very, very, very funny. It's a hilarious meme because it does represent a reality. Don't tell me it's not possible. If, if Betty snapped, if Betty was traveling through Nonsense's area because she now knows exactly where she lives, if she was traveling through Nonsense's area and she snapped and, you know, she just, just you know, went off the rails, we already know that she will break in or she will... Tre now, it's ironic because in those charges, she trespassed like crazy. Remember that for in just a minute, please. Remember that little trespassing nugget for in just a minute. Before this gets any worse for you. Get me? There's the threat. Let's listen to the threat. Well, let's listen to the threat. Let's get the threat. Let's get the words of the threat. In fact, let me just go ahead and act crazy. I'm going to get my notepad up here. I'm going to type... Son of a bitch. I'm going to type the words of the threat into my notepad. So let me do that. Let's hear this threat. Pause the music, Busy. Let's hear this threat. I'm going to type the words of the threat into the notepad. Your phone. Why don't you give me a call back, babe, before this gets any worse for you? Get me? Why don't you give me a call back, babe, before this gets any worse for you? Get me? Now, there, there is so much to break down about that one sentence, you know, that if Betty had ever gone to college, she would have learned how to actually analyze the English language a little, but I'm going to do it for you in a minute. Back, babe, before this gets any worse for you. Get me? Your phone. Why don't you give me a call back, babe, before this gets any worse for you? All you can do is laugh. That's all that you can do is laugh. Why don't you give me a call back, babe, before this gets any worse for you? Before it gets any worse for you is a threat. This sentence has an intent. It is intended to say to nonsense, what I am known for doing to people is a possibility with you if you can look out and see my habits, you will see what I am capable of doing. That is a possibility toward you. If you don't, what is it? Give me a call back. Now, the worst part in this sentence, I didn't even read yet. It's the get me because it's communicating to her victim nonsense that she is trying to insinuate. She added get me to the end. To make sure that if nonsense didn't already read this in a way so that it transferred a threat, transferred, um, uh, you know, this, if you don't comply, if you don't do what I say, you don't call me back, you don't do what I say, babe, demeaning, being demeaning, before this gets any worse for you. So then you got to ask yourself if you're a responsible parent and adult and person. Let's see here. Is this person just like constantly, you know, does, does this person capable of even, let's see what this person's capable of. So I know whether, like, how it's appropriate for me to react. Oh my God. She did those things. 42, 42 different uh, uh, felonies, felonies involving battery and hurting people. That right there. I said this long ago, weeks ago. When I first started reacting to Betty instead of Molly, when she worked her way into the sphere, Betty, and she did it herself. She did it herself. She wanted to work her way into the sphere. She wanted to be commentated on. She put the act on. She chose how she was going to act. It, she acts like it's everybody else's fault. It's like, look, everybody knows that I act like this, so if you come around me or if you commentate on me or if you talk about me, it's your fault that I target you, you know? But make sure you get this, right? It's not just saying you have to do what I say or bad things are going to happen to you. But the get me is saying it's, it's a confirmation. It's I don't want you to walk away from this thinking that I'm not implying this to you. You have to ask yourself, what am I implying? Because the get me is saying there's something under the surface. 
And the threat, in my opinion, is what we would call a direct threat. If anybody reads this, they're going to know they're being threatened. Got me? See, I just did it. I made sure you understood what I was saying. Got me? Get me? Good me. And the get me at the end of this is very poignant. It's very expressive. It really captures the seriousness of this issue. Because, of course, Betty is going to try to say that we're making a big deal out of nothing. That we shouldn't care if people threaten others. I mean, a person that covers true crime, that goes around and says, oh my God, look at the worst behavior that people are capable of, and gets to see all of those instances in front of them. And somehow, somehow, she's going to act like she doesn't understand how this is such a dangerous threat, right? And I want to make sure one more time before anyone gives me shit. Like I already said 50 times, I get it. People on the internet do and say stupid stuff that they don't mean. I get that. But when you've been targeted like they've been, they've been doxing and threatening nonsense, they've been spreading lies about her, me, even me. Like me over here talking about nonsense, talking about Molly and Betty and all these things that are going on. Reporting factually what's going on, giving my opinion, laughing at it. They're even threatening me. So, so they're, they're that desperate. But wait until you hear the salty. Wait until you hear the psychosis about to come out. I really didn't mean to play that song, but okay, it works. I meant to play my other song, but click the wrong button. I do that a lot. Now, I don't know if this is it. Today, delegation today. Uh, this is our Florida delegation meeting. This so um, I want to shout out Forgotten Whispers. Forgotten Whispers did a great job here because not only did Forgotten Whispers do some commentary, which I love when people do commentary, especially if they've been doing clips. And Forgotten Whispers probably done commentary before, but I just want to make sure I say it, okay? I'm not saying she never does. Uh, but it's a great video. It's great commentary, great points. Um, I think it was just excellent. I'm really glad she did this video. But she's playing Betty. This whole thing, I'm not going to play it for you. All right. Now, um, uh, what did you say? What was the timestamp, honey, from where Betty was like? Yeah, what was it? Uh, like, okay, okay, I got it then. All right, here we go. So here's... No and, and um, I typically will try not to play nonsense reacting all the time because I want you to go to Nonsense's channel and watch what she has to say. Nonsense, though, is, you know, this is directly affecting her, so I'm going to play nonsense. That way we can hear what she thinks and what she says. I can either agree, disagree, or I can give my point, and we can hear what Betty is saying. You get what I'm saying? So here we go. Blue. You get me? You got me? Uh, you good me. Hard here. I'm I want this video. Little... I want this video, though. What video is this now? Hello from PA. Crazy times in PA. We'll, we'll play a little bit of nonsense, but let me see if I can pull up uh, Betty's. We'll play it from Betty's for a minute, and then we'll come back there. What the? It's not there. Oh, no, it is. I mean, you just, you just have to really <laughs> kind of... You kind of really have to just soak this in. First off, let me make some general points. Uh, I've already told you about how I feel about her threatening nonsense, okay? So let me make some general points about what just happened, just general points. And yeah, guys, I know, LB's trying really hard to get my attention. Here's what I got to say to LB real quick before we go anywhere else. Number one, the only thing that she even complained about that could be even, you know, partially valid at all because she basically just whined and was upset that I bring her up. Um, let me go ahead and smash the entire whining, which was the majority of the video, and just destroy it with commentary real quick. You bring up random people and talk about random people all the time. How are you not valid to be discussed? You act like I'm doing something wrong discussing you as a YouTuber with 70,000 subs. I mean, when you had a thousand subs or five hundred subs, you were lying on Katie all the time and attacking her. Remember? 
I'm sorry, but you're going to have to wake up. You're valid to be talked about, especially if you're doing something. In the very least, at least I talk about you when you do something instead of like you do, which is just to hate on people. Though, she had one. She exposed me. You know how she exposed me? She took screenshots of me sharing my pay link and said that it was e-begging. Well, I'm glad to know that you believe <laughs> that because I share my pay link uh, in my Discord server and on my community tab, I guess is where she was mad about it. I guess you are upset because I share my pay link. So you must be really mad about what Molly and yourself and your husband and Betty and all your friends have been doing. So as soon as you get done criticizing them, the people that actually are ripping people off and doing all that, then we can address your fundamental misunderstanding of all live streamers and video uploaders. Because I do what everybody else does. I go and look at what's acceptable. Back when it wasn't really accepted to have a Patreon, I didn't have one when they first popped up. But once the demonetization happened and it became acceptable, everybody made one. And and it's that's a good thing. I've already given my opinion on this a million times. I don't hide. I don't lie to you. I tell you what I'm going to do. I share my link. If you're going to watch my show and if you're going to go over to my Discord or on Twitter, I might share my link when you see me live or posting. Though, I don't share my link in my uploaded videos. I don't. I think I've only done it a couple times. So... You could just choose not to watch if you don't, but you'd have to not watch the majority of YouTubers. What you criticize me for is what the majority of YouTubers do. It's such a horrible criticism. Now, what I was going to do, guys, is go grab where I have proof that LB faked an email to try to frame another YouTuber. And I was going to come in, play the evidence, show the email, break down uh, the eight mistakes she made when she faked it she kept saying she made one mistake you made eight mistakes when you faked that email not one just you don't you just don't understand how that's fine i was going to grab nate the lawyer nate the lawyer debunking her ass and showing that she faked the email and then i was going to go in and what was the other thing i was going to do i was going to show her she faked the email second part i i don't i don't care to remember i don't know and I was, basically, I was going to just prove to you what she did back then, which was run a fundraiser, a fraud raiser, after, with the thing, the faked email was used to do a fraud raiser, if you didn't know. And she then left the internet for like six months or something, and that's when she changed her channel name from Leslie Bass to LB. When she came back, she couldn't be Leslie Bass. Everybody knew what she did. So she had to change her name to LB. So I was just going to do a segment, a 10-minute segment on that. I just decided not to because she's just jelly. I get it. You're jelly. Whatever. LB, I've always been nice and given you um, good advice. Up until when you started to attack me, and I still am nice, but I make sure to criticize what you're doing wrong. So I'm going to give you a little piece of advice like I used to back in the day. Just do your content because you're not made for this. You're not good at this, okay? You're not able to hang in this world of commentary or live streaming. So just do your content for your audience because if you want to go back and forth, you know I've never done a fraud raiser. I've never done a fundraiser. I've never done any of the things that you support. I've never doxed anybody. I don't attack people. My show is the evidence. You can go through the whole damn thing and you're just going to get bored because you're not going to find what you want to find. So I'm going to be nice this time. One time. And I'm going to remind you. Why is it that you can sit on a stream and complain about me, but you can't go into a Zoom call with the disabled American veterans and have them school you on the vet bashing you still doing to me? Oh, but guess what she did do? She doxed me. Thanks for letting us know that you're an abhorrent, sick doxer. Because why did she bring up my family? And it's funny because she brought up things and said things about my brother and acted like it made him the greatest man in the world. It probably does. He's a good guy. Uh, but she doesn't seem to realize those same things are true of me. She just can't admit that to you. <laughs> so, there you go, LB. Instead of me just destroying you, I'm going to move on and get this done. But if, if it's not good enough and you want me to fully respond, just let me know, and I'll make sure to drop everything you did back then. I know you don't want me to, so let's move on. But if you want to find the evidence, it's very easy to find, guys. In fact, it's in my Discord server under the LB room. All of it's right there in case any of you want to do a video on it. So 
join my Discord server, hop on in and grab it and watch it. Because uh, I don't think that the Nate video debunking it is, uh, is public anymore. I think it's unlisted. And, oh, I do have a piece of advice for Nate, though. Hey, Nate, she's a scammer. She lies and attacks people. I wouldn't be giving her any attention or helping her. But if you do, I'm not going to be mad at you, man. I get it. You know, we try not to get bogged down by drama. We try to show these people, like, look, you could actually stop doxing and shit and just be a YouTuber, LB. You could do that, you know. You got a channel. And it's hard to get views if you're not going to tragedy pimp, though. So you might want to, you know, practice a little, study a little, because it's hard to do. All right. <laughs> you guys are like, uni, come on. Yeah. Um, when are you going to release? I've been trying. I was going to ask you this for a while, Betty. Will you please release this small child? Because we don't want to see it get choked. It's a joke, Betty. Chill. <laughs> it's a joke. It's a freaking joke. My God, you get triggered over everything. What's? Oh my God! So let go of me. Let go, Betty. Help! Did it work? I tried to make it look like an arm. Oh, my arm looks too much like my arm. Next time, I'm gonna have to shave my arm if I want to make it look like she grabbed me. Okay, got it. Can I give you some advice? You want to make your intro fast, and you want to hook the audience. That way you can stop tragedy pimping and maybe get some normal views. Well, good morning, guys. <laughs> so I'm going to react to this under the fair use article in the description. And this is a little bit different. I typically don't do this, but I'm actually going to read the fair use article in the description to you really fast. Because uh, you know how she is. So it says, this video may contain copyrighted material of the use, which has not been specifically authorized by the copyright owner. This material is being made available with the transformative or derivative work of the purpose of education, commentary, and criticism is being distributed without profit and believed to be fair use in accordance with Title 17 USC Section 107. You can support the stream at streamlabs.com forward slash unirock live or paypal.me forward slash unirock, or you can just subscribe and watch. Thanks. Uh thanks. Um, thanks for adding my pay link. To the uh, copyright disclaimer, the copyright office. That was nice of you. Uh, Marissa's in bed, so I decided. Well, what the heck? She's got a doctor's appointment. This Are you sure she's in bed, or is she is she not breathing? Was something constricting her neck? Is that why she's not waking up? Morning, but I don't know when she's supposed to go. <laughs> Did someone check? Because if you're in the house, it's just uh, a requirement. When Betty enters a home or a hotel, that if someone seems unconscious, they should check for a pulse. Uh, but she's still in bed, and I'm up. I've been up for a couple hours now, and just wanted to come by and say hi. This is my. You want to come by, and you can't stand it. You woke up, and you haven't gotten hardly any sleep. It looks like you just pulled your your hair out of the freaking uh, out of the dryer. It's like you stuck your hair in the dryer instead of using a towel, and you just pulled it out. And you're going to sit and, and basically get this off your chest. You're going to get this off your shoulders. You know that you're nervous over the threat. You're nervous that she's going to call the police. You're nervous because you know if she files a restraining order, she's going to get one. You know it's going to go on your record. You know that every YouTuber on the planet is going to talk about it. And you're going to have it debunk your cyber stalking narrative. You also know that that's very bad for you, considering you keep going to your town hall meetings and you're, you're so guilty over what you're doing. You've got this thing inside of you gnawing at you over stalking people so prolifically. In order to make yourself feel better about it, you need to go to your city council meetings and stand there and pretend as if you're the victim of this instead of the one doing it. It's weird. Good Lord, is it weird. It's so good to watch. It's like uh, it's like a bag full of popcorn at the movie theater every time you go to city council. Do not stop. Though, I heard a little birdie Twitter flew by my ear and told me a secret. Actually, it's public Twitter, so it's not a secret, but I'm just trying to be, you know, trying to I'm trying to make it more dramatic, but a little birdie flew by and told me that there's a bunch of people that have been getting the contact information of those townspeople that constantly listen to you talk and they're going to send them the videos you the, of you, what you've been doing. Specifically the video of the voicemail you left on her channel because that voicemail proves that you've doxed and cyberstalked her. By the definition you shared on your community tab 
So I don't know if you're going to be, I, I, for some reason, I just have this feeling that we're going to not see Betty at the town hall meetings anymore, and she's just going to stop talking about them. And most likely it'll be because she showed up there to talk, and they're going to say, hey, we got, we got the video sent in of you. You're barred from these. Get out of here. This is creepy. You need to stop cyberstalking people, and you need to stop coming in here every time you do something that makes you feel guilty, and you need to stop pretending as if you're innocent, okay? You can stand on your front porch and just pretend you're talking to the town, the city council. Hello. Well, I stay here. It's kind of cute. I had to open up the window last night. Marissa likes to keep... Yeah, man, when Molly's sleeping near you, I'm sure there's all kinds of vapors, and you're going to want to get the air out of there. I nice get it. Snuggly cold. Is there a lot of loud noises that are random loud noises? Or warm in here. I barely ever make fart jokes. I apologize. I just feel it's so appropriate. I mean, if you're going to stuff your face like, like Molly does while she's live, we can at least make a couple fart jokes. It's not too lowbrow for this show. It's just too hot. <laughs> too hot for me. So I had to open up the window. Yeah, well, you're probably sweating your ass off, waking up in cold sweats and stuff. Thinking that you hear the SWAT team coming after nonsense calls the cops on your ass. Because you're not allowed to cyberstalk her mother. You cyberstalked her damn mom. <laughs> you didn't even give an old address of nonsense. You had to give an old address of her mother. You have cyberstalked the living shit out of that woman, and it's disgusting. You know, I sit and, li I sit and deal with these people trying to do this to me all the time. You know, and, and it's been happening to me for so many years. Because, again, I say it all the time. I'm going to say it again. I debunked QAnon, and it's a political conspiracy theory. And because I debunked it, the entire extreme right wing sent me death threats, doxed me and stalked me and lied about me and went at me and all that. And this is old news. So I'm used to that shit. Doesn't mean it's okay or good or whatever, but I'm just like, whatever. It just, I'm desensitized. But I forget when the very beginning of when it first happened to me for the first time, you know, there was a worry there. And sometimes I forget that new YouTubers or people that are just starting to pick up their channels are going to feel that worry. And you know that too. And I think it makes you feel elation to know that you might have stirred her up a little bit. I don't think you did stir her up. That's the thing about nonsense. I think that's why everybody supports nonsense. I think she's handling this shit just fine. Which is, you know, the more you guys do this to her, the better you make her look. The more people that go subscribe, the more people that watch. Because it shows us she really is good at this. So thank you for that. Wonder last night. Crazy cat lady. Good morning. Peace, love, and life. Z-A. Oh, my God. Crazy cat lady supports Betty. So appropriate. Ooh. I bet the cats are telling her that Betty's innocent. What do you think, Meowster? What about you, Patches? She's innocent. She's innocent, crazy cat lady. You can support her. Send her your disability check. She's fine. Justice. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not going to do it. I was going to say justice for and then insert a name, but yeah, I can't. Excuse I can't. Me, Vit. Nice to see you. Zelda. Send it. Morning, justice for everyone. It's raining in Western North Carolina this morning. I have coffee in hand. So do I. Raining in... in North Carolina this morning. I'm waiting on BHB to start my day. And I didn't I didn't even put the good day song on because How in the world are you so fake to these people? <laughs> they have to know that you're being fake. I mean, you're a monster. We just watched you. I'm gonna show the peeps in a minute. You're yelling at these neighbors. You're being told to get out of their community and you're acting like a you're sitting there putting the poor man down and yelling at him in his own neighborhood because you're so utterly disrespectful but then you can just wake up it's like that you know that little trick people do where they'll like make this mean face and then they'll be like you know what i'm saying it's like she does that before she goes live i don't know how long i'm going to be able to stay on it just really kind of depends on when marissa needs to leave and so i figured it was it really depends on when Marissa gains consciousness, rolls around for a bit, cries for me to help her up, and then talks about how hungover she is for an hour and a half before the pills. Okay, before they kick in, got it. Probably best to get to you guys first and chat away before we got to pack up and leave. Before I have to get Molly out of bed. I'm not even ready to pack up. I'm still in pajamas, actually. <laughs> but don't tell anybody. Oh, never mind. He he. You already know that we're all gonna watch this video. <laughs> You already know. It's why you did it. I just told the whole world. You want me to sit and insult your pajamas and your looks and your hair and all that. 
and I, I made a couple tiny little jokes, but you're not going to get that from me. I'm here to talk about the stalking. I'm here to talk about the threats you left on a voicemail. And I'm here because you know you woke up nervous about it, and that's what made you jump on that damn phone. That's what made you jump on that stream. You got nervous. You started thinking, oh, shit. What if some of my subscribers see Nonsense's stream and listen to Nonsense? Ooh, I, you know, because you were cocky last night. You know, there was something in you making you real cocky, making you real, you know, headstrong and courageous last night. But now you're scared. And don't say you're not. Oh, I'm not scared. I'm in my pajamas. You're scared. That's why you, you don't ever run in like this. You did it because you know what you did last night. You realized it. Soon as you woke up and came out of that dream, it hit you like a ton of bricks. Oh, shit. I got to go live. I got to do damage control. Sepsis, it's nothing. True crime group. If you got there, we basically want to case, and apparently they found her. Um, so, of course, she's going to LARP. She's going to pretend like she cares about a subject other than what happened yesterday so that she can try to make her subs think she's there to talk about something other than what happened. But it's coming. I love to met her. Uh, Here, let's Love, find it over the place and but there's a couple other places like i've never been to massachusetts uh, queen and he just needs a break pepper you know, you know what's sick they tried to act like we we knew what happened to dolly or something and that's why we talked about and reacted to what betty did on her stream to that woman who claimed that she was ard like we had any like like they think that we actually stalk them like they do us when we barely even look at anything other than what they I'm so busy with what you post every day and what every other topic I look at I barely know anything about you and your friends I'm looking at what you're doing that relates to what I'm talking about, which is a small percentage of what you do. I don't give a shit about all this other garbage, but, you know, the narcissism that's about to come out of her mouth will explain why she believes all of us follow her every move. In just a second, you're going to get it. You know, give them the same stuff they're they're giving him. Two movement where it's every guy's fault, but, a, um, you know, wrench next to their name so nobody can impersonate them. But if you lost, look at the person next to you. Look at somebody in your home. Wait till you give the wrong person that wrench and they kick all your supporters out. If you woke up right now and they were gone out of your life and you got somebody like me in your chat talking crap about you nonstop. See, this is what she does. I, I'm glad I found this. She is trying to, to um, use Dolly's misery and misfortune. By the way, I've already posted my condolences. I've already done it, even though I don't like the guy. I, I, you know what I said? I said I feel horrible. I can relate to losing a loved one. I've lost several of them. But see, unlike, unlike her, I actually had people that don't like me try and go around and, and do things with the fact that they had passed away. And I'm not even going to name them because I don't even think I brought them to you. I think I might have talked about them on Twitter the littlest bit, right? What happened? Though, she, on the other hand, is lying. She's pretending like the reason that we reacted to her attacking the claimed our victim is because we wanted to take shots over him losing somebody. No, actually, we have empathy for people that lose others because we've lost people too. And I even have a massive amount of empathy for Dolly. And I, I, would, I would expect that... Um, Every, no, no one in this community, regardless of what he does online, wants him or, or any of you to have to deal with losing someone. You're the ones that go and you don't have the empathy for people that lose others. You're the ones that make money, monetize it, and exploit it, lie about it, which I'm going to show you more evidence of that after this video. But let's continue. And, hey, thank you. And on and on. So glad to have you. Man, you hit that big 12 months and you get that sign next to your name. That's so awesome. How you'd feel. Give the man a break. Give them who who's doing anything to Dolly? It's so it's so weird. I don't even like I go search the garbage that they say. Oh my god, somebody attacking Dolly. I might criticize him. I can't find it. I don't even know who's doing it. I haven't seen a single person attack the man over this, or even close to anything over this. Unless she's trying to say that the reason he got accused was because of this, but that happened before. All of that happened, Betty, before this happened. Now, did the accusation happen 
before this horrible tragedy of Dolly's. I don't know, but if it did, she's the one who threatened. The, she could have kicked that person out, waited until things died down from him losing somebody, then came back on stream and addressed the person. She was she addressed the person out of anger and chose to address the person at that time. So why did we talk about it? Did we talk about it because we knew he'd lost? We didn't even know. We didn't even have a clue. I just found out about this yet last night that he lost somebody. So you're the one saying you knew about him losing someone and you still chose to act that way and threaten and dox and use their location to threaten the person accusing him of war. Seems like you exploited the tragedy. But again, just so I, just to make sure everybody gets it, I'm very sorry for, for Dolly, regardless of what he posts to YouTube. Because I understand that what you're posting to YouTube shouldn't be, a, people shouldn't be going real life. And I feel horrible when someone loses someone. Banana break. You know, only, only evil people, evil haters. Let's hear it. What do they do? What do they do, Betty? Can't give somebody a rest. Even can't give somebody a rest. Like maybe doxing and doxing and doxing and doxing until you know about their mom's 20-year-old property. Doxing and doxing and doxing and doxing until you have their phone number and you call them and leave them a threatening message. I don't know of nonsense myself or anyone in our community doing this because we'd kick them out of the community. We'd block them. Right? <laughs> I mean, it's pretty crazy. You the ones that do this stuff, not us. But I get how that Darvo works because unlike you, I actually study the stuff that I talk about. You have to deny. You got to attack. Then you got to reverse the victim offender role. It's called Darvo. If you don't know about it, you can go watch a stream I did breaking it down or look it up yourself. Basically, it's when a perpetrator or someone who's doing something to take advantage of or, or get something over on someone else goes out and gaslights and lies to switch the roles so that they, being the perpetrator doing this, are the victim now. And the person who's the real victim becomes the bad guy. In fact, narcissists live by one of the tools in the narcissist playbook is Darvo. And if you know what to look for, you'll notice they do it every single time something happens to them. When BK lost his sister, one of his, I don't know if it was- Jesus, shut up. Okay. We are all over this country. Very yet. We are all over this country treating people like garbage, doxing the hell out of people because Betty, me, I know that if you do it in real life, if you stalk people in real life, and if you cyber stalk people in real life, and if you threaten people in real life, and if you yell at people in real life, and if you choke people in real life, it's not a crime. But the minute you touch a phone or a computer and you do it, it's stalking and cyber stalking. Okay, well, guess what? You, you called nonsense. That article you shared, what did it say, Betty? Did you read it? This is why I don't, don't think you've read that article you shared. It said that cyber stalking includes the internet, the phone, and other mediums of communication. So you cyber stalked nonsense yesterday, but you actually did stalk her in real life too because you wouldn't have the information about her mother's address if you didn't. And that's just this year. Almost sounds like what you're doing is distracting your audience here by talking about uh, some case that you're bringing up. Like, hey, Daily, thank you. Oh my gosh, those stickers are off. YouTube's got a bunch of new emojis and stickers. Supposedly, they're rolling out these new stickers that you can actually have things pop up on the screen while I'm streaming. I've never seen it happen yet, but the minute that it happens, I'll let you know. Um, but yeah, like a little heart will pop up and then it'll bust or something, or a little balloon will float by. Uh, supposedly, people are talking about how YouTube has added this, but but I don't know anything. It's almost like, Betty, that through this part of your stream, you were distracting people by bringing up some case and all this. It's almost like through this part, you're trying to then, you know, manipulate and gaslight your audience by bringing up a lie about Dolly and trying to turn your criticizers into bad guys. Then it's almost like through here... You're talking about Tell what? Tell me which other person is doing. Oh, yeah. How much you travel around. Tell me which other person stalks as much as me. Tell me which other person goes around cyber stalking as much as me. Betty, I don't give a shit whether you fly to these places and you do a report. Your reports are absolute doggy doo doo. 
Your information is wrong. We have debunked everything that you put out about Idaho. Let's just use Idaho. Everything you said was wrong. And yes, you can fact check that. You can go look at the streams we did. Completely wrong. Fake audio, bad information, lies. Oh, oh what's that? What, I'm getting a, new, a report in my ear. They just did this yesterday while they were on the scene for this, this, the Dobbs family, and they lied about the Dobbs family just like they did with Idaho, and I'm going to prove it to you in a minute. Oh, holy shit. The thing is, your reports are doo-doo. They're inaccurate, full of misinformation. They're exploitative, full of lies. And in order to, I guess, keep your audience, you know, wrangled in, you try to, you know, do this cyber stalking and threatening that you do. So it's just, um, I will go watch a YouTuber that's not on the scene if they actually are correct. They give me the information. They give it to me in an entertaining way. You're acting like you're, you're playing a dark side Phil. Dark side Phil says, you don't have to know who he is. He's just another YouTuber. He says, I'm, I give you raw gameplay. I don't have ads. I don't do sponsorships. I don't do those things where I'm selling out. But what he actually does is e-beg. When he doesn't have enough donos, he'll, he'll, he'll look and see how many he has, and he'll say, guys, I need to hit the $150 goal, guys. Come on, someone needs to send in some money. And there's video clips of him e-begging to the maximum degree, right? That's what Betty's doing. That's what she's doing with this whole, if I'm on the ground, everything's great. It's like, no, it, it depends on what you do while you're on the ground. It depends on the information you put out. I don't know how, but you're on the ground, and you still, you should, be, you should at least know the basis of a story. You should be able to give us something on point, something true, right? You can't. You're on the ground, and you get everything wrong. Someone who is not there does a million times of a better job than you do. No one's going to watch you. Up and printing a fly, right? Printing flyers. Oh my God, if I just name off all the useless things I do, maybe it'll fool these people watching me into thinking I've done something. You want to say, but A ASU mom, thanks for so. Here we go. Here we go. So now ASU mom, a member of our community, much loved, right? A supporter of a bunch of channels, someone that gives their opinion in the chats, a viewer, uh, someone that, you know, has been around, goes in. And it and says something that triggers Betty. And oh my God, does she lose her shit. And this is where she starts to get triggered and rolls in to the good stuff. Um, now, I don't know what ASU mom said, but here's the deal. She blocked ASU mom and then starts talking about how you've got to be respectful to me, Bullhorn Betty, in my chat. You've got to be an adult here, right? And again, it's just like what I just said before. You don't, you're out there being extremely disrespectful to the community that just lost this family, that just had this, these, this vic, these victims of a mental health disorder, of a suicide pact, which they're trying to lie and say there was no pact. You went there and you attacked and yelled at and put down and screamed at the neighbors when they called the police on you. They put up no trespassing signs and they still went in and trespassed again. And the cops had to come and tell them, don't go in anyone's yards. Now, they wanted to be like, oh, officer, we're on the street. We're on the street. Right? Yesterday, you were in the yard. The video out there proves that you all are in the yard. Why didn't you tell the cop the truth? Oh, officer, well, then if I'm not allowed to be in the yard, you need to arrest me because yesterday I was in that yard. Oh, you don't give a shit about justice? I didn't think so. Be on the losing end of this. But they're going to keep trying to convince their people everything they're doing is lawful and legal and they're not being they're not going to be held responsible well it's funny because you know what what in the sam hell is she talking about has she lost her mind and trust me by the time we're said and done with it there's only they're, they're going to be they're going to be on the losing end of it oh my god betty it's not about winning and losing what do you this isn't a game this isn't a game you're going real life you are going real life. You've taken it away from the game of commentary, the game of words. If you were on YouTube playing fair, uploading your responses to people and what you think about things, then maybe you could say who's going to win and lose. Whoever gives the best commentary, the most logical, the most entertaining wins. Right? The audience gets to decide. But you are cheating. That's what every one of these tactics are. It's you cheating the YouTube system. 
It's what you're doing when you're going out there and stalking, doxing, threatening, and doing this stuff. It's you stacking the deck so that you can have some subs by lying to them. You wouldn't lie to your subs if you really felt you were winning. The, the winners don't have to lie. The winners don't have to threaten the other side. The, the losers have to to make up for the fact that they're losing. It is a fact. Why would someone that is 2,000 miles in the lead of the race start cheating? Why? They won't. They don't. It's ridiculous. You're the one cheating the system with Molly. Because if you guys go out and play by the same rules that I play by, nonsense, or anyone in our community plays by, you, you don't know how. You don't know how to do what I'm doing right now. You don't know how to take in information, order it in your head, and then come out here and tell people and react to it. You don't know how to do that. That's why you don't do it. You know, I don't sit there and chatter behind back. But thank you for, for acknowledging that was... You don't sit and chatter behind someone's back? Excuse me? Excuse me? <laughs> bless you. God bless you. She got a super sticker. God bless you. All that money. Oh, yeah, baby. I'm going to be feeling good. Uh, why did you leave non... Now, listen to this $2 super chat. Why did you leave nonsense a threatening voicemail? Are you going to be honest? You just said you don't lie. You just said you're not lying. You just said everybody else is lying. Everybody else is the bad guy. Why did you leave nonsense a threatening voicemail? You did. I just played it. We all heard it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a I'm gonna do a poll real quick. In fact, I'll do this instead. I'm, I don't want to take the time to start a poll, but I'm gonna ask you: Was that was that a voicemail a threatening voicemail? Put a one in the chat if it was a threatening voicemail. I'm doing it too. One, one in the chat. Was that a threatening voicemail? Put a one in the chat if you agree. There's no re like it's not even up for debate. Like, it's not even up for debate. You threatened her. That is the definition of the sentence that you left. Oh, you guys are blowing it up, and I love it. That's the definition of the sentence you left on Nonsense's voicemail. You can't argue it any other way. I broke it down like child's play for you. So are you going to be honest? Are you going to apologize to her? Are you going to try to say, thank you, Daily? Dang, thank you. Uh, like, think about this, Betty. Think about it like this. Maybe you were just drunk last night. We're people. We get it. Maybe you were mad at her. Maybe she said something that upset you and got under your skin. Obviously, she said many things that have ups not only upset you and got under your skin, but have poured salt in the open damn wound. Her words are salt going in your open wounds from where your fifis are so hurt. Your fifis are ripped to shreds, and her words are salt in the open fifi, fifi wounds. Um, though, m couldn't you just be a good person for the first time in your life, tell the truth, and apologize to her? Because this, voice, this uh, super chat about the voicemail is true. Let's hear it. Let's hear what she... This, let's see if Betty is honest. Let's see if Betty is truthful. Let's see if Betty does the right thing. Because if you can't do the right thing and admit where you were wrong when you are the most wrong, obviously you're proving all of our criticism correct here. So please, hook it up. Let's hear it. Nonsense, a threatening voicemail. <laughs> Now, wait, just wait. Now, first off, I want you to look at her face because you know that I'm such a dork that I love to break down body language. I started to do this as a joke a while back and I started to really love it because I'm a dork. Okay. The body language. You got to look at the body language. A little bit of Unirox body language up in here. Give me the Unirox body language theme song, please. There it is. Betty, when she says this, she tries to put out a fake laugh, right? And if you look at her face as she is taking the fake laugh into words, you will see a pained, P-A-I-N-E-D, a pained look. That pained look is a flush. It's a, it's not blood going through you. Okay, because when you feel blood pump through you, like if your heart speeds up, it just feels like your heart's beating harder. 
It's where your skin, you'll feel the red blood go into your skin. That's what causes you to get blush. She got that little like, I've been busted with my hand in the cookie jar in front of my audience flush. She didn't mean to say that out loud. She did not mean to put that on the screen. She wasn't thinking. that. Now, th now, the reason why this is so perfect is because she just got a distracting super chat right before this. You can choose what to put up on the screen. She just got that one uh, distracting super chat right before this. I don't know if it'll show it. Um, it was for like 99 cents or something, right? And then here we go. Thank you, Wild. Oh, there it is. Wild Cherry Super Sticker distracted her. And all of a sudden now she sees another one come in. She's not even reading. She's not paying attention. And she puts it on the screen. And now she's got to, now she's got to explain what happened. Cherry, God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Why is it God bless you for 99 cents? But you're going to act this way over $2. You should be uber duber God blessing ASU mom. Do you God bless ASU mom? Uh, why did you leave nonsense a threatening voicemail? <laughs> Look at that laugh. That is the most fake Betty cackle, Betty witch's cackle I've ever seen. Oh, well, that just, um, I, and it wasn't threatening at all. It wasn't threatening at all. You know, Mrs. expects everybody in the world to behave perfectly. Mrs. being cyber-stalked. You know, in order for me to believe you, about you being cyber-stalked, you can't lie every breath that comes out of your mouth. If you want people to believe what you say about these people doing these threatening things to you without posting evidence or proving any of it, wouldn't you think you would stop lying every time you breathe? You exist you live the oxygen enters your blood stream through your lungs when you lie breathing doesn't give you oxygen in your bloodstream you have to lie in order to oxygenate yourself in order for you to exist breathing is meaningless without the lie for betty i just said hi how you doing you just said hi oh no that, that that's uh, that's all hey this is nonsense picking up her phone um, this is Bullhorn Betty. Hi. What a short voicemail. I mean, it couldn't have been a dox. You couldn't have said her mother's old address, and you couldn't have then threatened her, right? How you doing, babe? How you doing, babe? I don't even think it said. The babe part was lodged in the middle of, if you don't listen to me, it's going to get really bad for you. Get me? Right? <laughs> right? <laughs> Remember that? Remember the babe part that was in the middle of, you better listen to me, babe, or it's going to get really bad for you. Get me? That's where the babe was. Right. Why can I remember this better than you? You did it. Why is it that you can't remember? Oh, because you're lying. It's not that you can't remember. You're pulling from your imagination, not your memory. Ah, oh, okay. You want to sit there and harass me. You want to... Who, who harassed you, for God's sake? See what I'm saying? You just proved it, Betty. You just got called, instead of apologizing nonsense, instead of actually owning up to what you did wrong and saying, of course, nonsense, you don't have anything to worry about. I, w I might have said some dumb shit, but I was just mad. Okay, fine, let it go. Let's move on, right? But no, in classic Molly Betty tragedy pimps on the ground fashion, you got to lie. You got to lie. I'm gonna sit there and harass um marissa who is harassing marissa are you out of your are you insane are you insane I, i'm being freaking dead serious man how is nonsense hitting play on a live stream and giving her opinion about what you all do in a by the abiding by the rules of YouTube, never threatening you, abiding by the law, abiding by fair use, which which she's factually done. Every YouTuber that's been around for many, many years who has seen nonsense his content respects her following the rules and following fair use. It's almost like she went and studied that shit and went and implemented it. But you, on the other hand, break fair use, break people's privacy, dox and threaten people constantly, but you think you're busted here. You are busted. And, and someone who wants justice all the time 
The reason why we know you don't want justice for these victims, and we know that that's why you're exploiting their tragedies, is because if you can't, if you can't abide by justice for the small things, then how are we supposed to believe that you truly feel people need to abide by justice for these other things? Justice is not only applicable when you can exploit somebody for money. It is a it's a concept, it's a philosophy, and it's an idea that is the it's the founding principle for why society exists right now. Justice. I'm gonna call you up. Because I have those balls. I you have balls to call her out? How, how, is a, how is a keyboard warrior threat voicemail docs you having balls? You can't even tell. Why can't, if, you were, if you had balls, let me tell you what it means. The slang term that you have balls it has nothing to do with genitalia. I'm just making sure you all understand this. It has nothing to do with genitalia. It's she's talking about, you know, courage and stuff or whatever. She's talking about a backbone or whatever. Okay, good. I'm glad you're with me there. <laughs> Pretty obvious, but still. Um, you would be telling the truth if you had balls. You would have actually apologized to her if you had balls. You'd tell the truth to ASU mom. You wouldn't lie in front of your audience. Do I need to go on? Because I'm getting a little bit boring here. I'm getting a little bored. I have the balls to call somebody up and say, hey, what's your problem? But that's not what you did. Because you threatened her. That's that. What is that tough? Are you saying it's tough to threaten somebody on a voicemail? Because I've, I have existed in the real world the majority of my life. I know I started YouTube about eight years ago, but I, I'm still have existed in the YouTube uh, or in the real world the majority of my life. So I've been out there on these streets, and I know that people that call and leave te uh, threats on voicemail or text message are considered the ones who are full shit, that just are all talk. And I know you're going to say, well, I've choked people many times as evidence that you'll fight somebody, but that's not what we're doing. We're, we are giving opinions. You are triggered over someone's opinion. You can't take it. <laughs> you're so paper thin. That you 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 do not have a thick skin. Your skin is paper thin. You can't take it. You know I don't sit there and chatter behind back. But thank you for. Yes, you do. Actually, w what do you mean you don't? You and Marissa had a chatter fest last night. Do you forget that you're streaming this stuff? <laughs> is that what's going on here? For acknowledging you are streaming means it's a public video. What you do on the stream, others can click on and watch. It's the basis for the people watching you. Lordy, help that me. That was her phone number. Thank you so much for that. No, no. See, now you're being dishonest again. You and Marissa already knew it was her phone number. You knew it was her phone number when you called it. So what are you saying? Are you saying that you were just guessing? Are you trying to convince us? I, I'm sorry, this is so dumb. This is so incredibly dumb that I can't even believe it came out of your mouth. So you and Marissa were playing Dial the Random Numbers game, and you were like, every time you hit a voicemail, you were leaving nonsense, a threatening email, or a threatening voicemail, just hoping that she would admit that one of them was, was the right number. Are you kidding me? What? Do you even think before you speak? Because this is, this is really, this is really funny. I can just imagine you and Molly over there just dialing random numbers. Hold on. The voicemail said, said her name's Becca. That might be it. What'd you dial? Uh, four, five, five, nine, six, five, two, da, 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 da. Oh, okay. Let me write that down just in case it's her. Okay. I'm going to leave it. We don't believe you. We know how you got her number. Because Molly put out a video doxing her a couple weeks ago. Molly had been trying to dox her and asking for her information for a long time. As soon as Molly got it, as soon as she managed to dox her, she ran to her channel, went live, and said, Hi, Becca. Hi, Rebecca. Or whatever the hell she did, remember? Because if you, if you don't remember, I have the video. Or you could just watch my stream. Now do you get why we do our streams? You hate our streams so much, Betty. But if we don't do our streams, y'all will lie within 4.6 minutes later. We have to do these streams or else everyone's going to get confused.
It's like, she's so busted, man. This is busted Betty. You busted. You are so busted. <laughs> this is how Betty acts when she's literally like four years old, got her hand in the cookie jar, and mom just stepped in the kitchen right before dinner. This is her. And she's never changed. She has never changed from like the age of eight until now. Nothing in that brain has evolved since the age of when she got caught with her hand in that cookie jar when she was a kid. So that means I have her phone number and her address correct. Well, of course. You, what are you talking about? Yes, when Molly doxed her, when, she, when Molly doxed her, she had her name and phone number and she gave it to you last night. You didn't guess it. What are you trying to do? Are you trying to defend Marissa? Are you trying to act like, are you trying to put up damage control for Marissa right now and be like, if I pretend like I guessed it out of every, every state and every phone number in the country and I was just guessing it and then I finally got it right, then people won't think that Molly gave it to me last night while I was sitting there blasted out of my mind. And, and by the way, I could go to Molly's channel and play them after they made the phone call because yes molly was there she knows you did it she was she did it with you she's just as guilty as you yeah and i know that molly's going to be mad at you for being caught and being busted so transparently with this and you're going to get you're going to try to make it hold on marissa i'm going to go live and pretend like we didn't do anything and that we were just playing guess the phone number and then everyone will believe us and it'll be okay you know molly is going to be mad at you because you drug her into this but you did it you, you did it, and you won't take responsibility for it. So, yeah, Molly is culpable. So if she wants to keep her crap up, she's going to be sued just like everybody else. Sue her. Sue her. Sue me. Do it. Maybe if you do it and you end up having to pay us a shit ton of money for filing frivolous-ass lawsuits, when we go in and prove that you've been stalking and doxing us, which you're not good at it, okay? When we go in there and drop that on your head and we get you a judgment to us, maybe other people will stop threatening this shit because it's cringy. It's cringy Karen behavior. Uh, can I speak to the judge manager, please? You need to go get your hair cut back into the Karen style because you want to speak to the judge manager way too often, but you never, ever follow through. You make appointments to see this judge manager every other freaking week, and you never follow through and actually go talk to him. I mean, for fuck's sake, man, for someone that sits and says, my rights, my rights, my rights, wah, 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 you're the first person to not respect ours. You're the first one. Do you have, do you think you've got anyone full? Because all you're doing is helping us. Like, you want to sit and act like we're the ones because we're doing these streams, creating these streams. You are doing it. You're choosing the cringy, crazy behavior. Well, you're just reacting. And I just read, now you might understand why I've read the fair use and uh, copyright section down in my description. Because she's never read that shit. She doesn't know anything about fair use or copyright, or she wouldn't be saying she's going to sue somebody. Are you going to sue yourself for putting yourself in this position? You better get in there and file that shit because maybe it'll stop yourself. I'm, I'm done with the bullshit. I'm done. Oh, my God. Thank the Lord. You're finally going to stop doing this stuff to people and then trying to pretend like it's them doing it to you. Okay, great. We can move on with our lives now. I know you don't like being checked. Okay, and I'm not the one checking you. I'm laughing at you. Nonsense is the one checking you, right? And I know it stings, but you're an adult. Remember? Remember how you're an adult? Remember how you're a big bad adult? Well, when you mess up and nonsense checks you, you're going to have to take the sting. These, these creators are lying to you. What? You do realize we're not convincing our audience of anything. We're giving our opinion. Our audiences do not have to agree with us. When audiences agree with commentators, let me explain this to you because you've never done it before. When you do commentary, you're not convincing your audience of anything. What? No, you're not. You're, you're not convincing them, Betty. You're getting up and giving your opinion. Everyone in the chat will typically find a commentator that they agree with and that they like their their commentary because they actually like what they're saying they agree with them and they will usually support and watch them because they like their that, that's the basis of commentary 
it's all of us get to give our opinion. This is what a lot of haters don't understand. It's why they always fail, and it's why they're always jealous while these other YouTubers are sitting there doing good. It's because they don't understand that you. if you go and lie to your audience, you're going to just scare people away. People aren't that dumb. I, why do I have to constantly say this like every two months or every month? People aren't that dumb. Shit, it's been every week for the last couple months. People aren't dumb. You're not fooling anyone but yourself and a few of the people in your audience. And I'm sorry, but there's a reason why the people in your audience keep getting fooled. They won't develop a, a, the most basic critical thinking skills for themselves and actually go out and do a tiny bit of research. Okay? There's creators that are literally going away. Little channels that are just disappearing because we are taking them to court. We're done. Um, so, wait. You're going to take Kool-Aid to court because that's the only channel that's disappeared. Well, if you were gonna, if Marissa was gonna take that channel to court, she would have filed the copy strikes from her main channel. The fact that she used three different channels to file those copy strikes is because she knows that she struck a fair use channel. Maybe you should actually do some research and look into fair use before you start talking, because either Molly's lying to you or you're just lying again. And she will be next. Nonsense, not. <laughs> Wait, you just said nonsense will be next? Nonsense is going to be next, right? R really? Really now? Nonsense is going to be next. <laughs> That's the funniest. If I could fake laugh like you, I would. That's the funniest damn thing I've ever heard. She has done so many sacrifices to her channel in the way that she reacts to things and the way that she commentates Unlike myself, where, I, where I'm sitting here and I'm trying to put the video on the screen, nonsense can't do that because you guys threaten her so much. And I can't wait until this whole thing is over and nonsense can actually, like, you know, put the thing up on the screen that she wants to talk about and she doesn't have to, you know, put the front screen up when she's talking. Because she knows, unlike myself, where the, maybe not this YouTube channel because it's new, but my YouTube account and my partnership are very old and have a very good reputation with YouTube. And you guys know you can't come in here and strike me like you're threatening nonsense and others. Because if you do, YouTube's going to handle it quicker than they will with them because I actually have that reputation. I, I have that time. and not re I have a time with them where I've followed the rules. But when it comes to newer channels and it comes to people that are newer, they have a harder time with it until they've established themselves. This is just a fact of YouTube. It's why YouTube made changes so that you have to have a thousand subs or 10,000 of this or 400 watch hours and stuff like that to be able to have features, right? Because they say, well, if someone follows the rules for a long time, you know, we know that they're able, you know, in this huge amount of YouTube channels, we know that those are the ones that we should help out the most, right? Because there's a lot of people like you, Betty, that after you get banned for copyright abuse or threatening people or... Um, doxing, you'll go in and create a hundred new channels and every time you get banned, you'll just move to the next one so you can keep grabbing a few pennies here and there, right? And since there's so many banned people that do this, it creates this massive number of people out there. So YouTube has a hard time servicing everybody between the fakers and the real people, right? And it's sick because nonsense would be able to, you know, have more. And, and I do think at one point she will be able to. But while she's dealing with you guys, it is the smartest decision on the planet that she's made to be more careful. But her being more careful means you're not going to be able to just do that to her. If you even try, you know how many creators will rally in to support her and in, 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 in her being struck a million times or whatever you're threatening here. On top of that, she will not have to spend a dime to go to court. Not only will she not have to spend a dime, she'll get so much money sent to her for the lawsuit that you're threatening if it actually happens that she will have at least triple the money she needs to make sure. Because I, I mean, it's just impossible for that not to happen with all the creators that support her, okay? So you can try, but you're up against an entire community this time. 
You're not you're gonna have a harder time picking on the little creators now that people know what you've been doing. And you should have never messed with people in copyright and doing that. Because once you do that, that gets the attention of a lot of creators when you start doing that copyright shit. We are working on the bigger channels, but I'm going to take every single... You guys don't understand. I have said I've had enough. They keep playing with me. Gee, Willikers, Batman. For someone that worked for a lawyer, that's why I don't believe you did. For someone that knows the law, that's why I don't believe you do. You just keep bullshitting. Just keep acting like you keep saying things that prove you don't know the law. And trust me, by the time we're said and done with it, trust you. Trust you. There's only they're going to be they're going to be on the losing end of this. We're not fighting you. We you, you. I mean, you can fight us if you want. We're not fighting you. We're following fair use. We're following the rules of YouTube, and we're commentating and giving our opinion by by our right on the public things that you're doing. That's it. That's all. See, you go in and you find smaller creators that don't know the rules that well, and you try to find them messing up, and then you take them down because you know that if they go and try to fight, they've messed up, they broke a rule, they've done... We've been here for a long time. This video should be seen by more creators. Because not only have you left a threatening voicemail, but the next day, now you're threatening... You just you're threatening and threatening and threatening here. You're just you're just sitting here stacking the threats because you're a bully. You are a bully. You don't give a shit about anyone's rights. You don't give a shit about what's right because you're bullying nonsense. What do you think? Because she's a a, a woman or a female? Do you think because she's a female? Right. Sorry, it's a military. Military makes us call women females. You get used to it. Because she's a woman. Is that why you think you can bully her? Or is it because you found out that my that I have a 30-some thousand subscriber channel and a 20-some thousand subscriber channel that you just ignored me? Because eventually you're going to admit my existence and you're going to start threatening me and playing this game with me. And I'm just going to laugh at you. I'm just telling you. I will just laugh at you. Because it's, it's just ridiculous. You want a solution? We've offered you a solution this whole time. Be a normal YouTuber. Play fair. S stop threatening people. Stop doxing people. Right? There's your solution. It all goes away the minute you do that. You won't do it. But they're going to keep trying to convince their people everything they're doing is lawful and legal and they're not being they're not going to be held responsible. Put it on the screen. I'll broadcast it. Put the law we're breaking on the screen. That's what you do if you think you're right. Put it on the screen. You're the paralegal. Go in. Show me where in fair use, nonsense, myself, Toasty or any of us, heals anybody, clip channels anyone. Because you know, guess what Molly admitted when she took down Kool-Aid there, Betty? She admitted that the only reason she did it is because she felt Kool-Aid wouldn't fight back. She admitted that. Responsible. Well, it's funny because you know what? We're holding funny. people responsible for their actions. Really now? So you guys weren't lying to people in the community because you were trying to not be held responsible for your actions? Are you willing? Okay, prove it. Put your money where your mouth is. Convince Marissa to turn herself in for trespassing yesterday. Tell her to go in and tell the cops, I trespassed on this property. Tell her to admit the truth that you guys were trespassing. Admit the truth about Letitia's money and Dre and the Dre situation. Admit the truth about the fraud raiser, the, the Letitia fraud raiser. Admit the truth about you doxing and uh, threatening people. Admit the truth about how you got her phone number. Admit the truth about how you knew what her mother's address was. Admit the truth. Because until you do, we don't believe you. But A ASU mom, thanks for so thank you so very much. Thank you so very much. She didn't subscribe 
she gave you a two dollar super chat my god how triggered and upset are you much for acknowledging that one i got the phone number right that means i got her address she's not nonsense dingbat she doesn't know if that's the right phone number or address what are you talking about that isn't nonsense betty does this too whenever betty gets super busted doxing and threatening people she'll sit there and when someone in her live chat a supporter of, of the person she doxes says something to her she'll pretend like she's talking to nonsense but you're talking to a viewer this person let me let me explain how this works nonsense lives in a home somewhere in the united states you know exactly where i don't but the person you're talking to could be in a different country and is it's very unlikely that this person lives with nonsense i know this is really hard realization betty but the person asu mom most likely doesn't live with nonsense right which means that she's going to probably get a cease and desist letter very very soon you think that's going to shut her up cease and desist means to cease and desist breaking the law violating the law it's not something that you can just flippantly throw at people who aren't violating the law or, or breaking any rules. So she will cease and desist. But you, why, you know, it's, it's ironic that you're saying that nonsense is going to get a cease and desist. She's barely talked about you until you doxed her. You've barely come up. Are you telling me you're this upset that nonsense mentioned your name a couple times? Just a couple days ago, your name came up and she said, I don't even want to fuck with her. I'm talking about Molly. I'm talking about all this other stuff. Betty's not even involved. I don't even want to mess with her. I heard her say it. And that triggered you this bad, huh? You're just scared, aren't you? Appreciate that. You're scared. When, it, when you guys are done playing, you guys can come here. I am a very strategic woman. Come where? I'll talk to you. I'll talk to you. What are you talking about? Are you acting like we're scared of you or something? Have you looked in the mirror? Everything I do, I do for strategic purposes. So you got drunk and you called someone's phone and threatened them because it's your strategy of getting a restraining order or getting in trouble with the law or something because that's a really bad strategy. Think about it. We had voice for the voiceless calling York Police Department instead. The, the, no, the, this has okay. So here's how argumentation works, Betty. When you when you argue things, you need to at least have them be somewhat related, either in concept or in application, right? Now I know that's really going to confuse you. So when you bring up random things about you, what you've done, and all this garbage that you think are tactical, it doesn't matter if it doesn't relate to what you're talking about. Okay, I'm super tactical because I did something five months ago. It's like what? Instead of uh, the Poconos, right? I had. I don't even know what came out of your mouth. I know. Now. I'm super tactical, Poca Pocahontas. I have no clue what that means. What the hell I'm doing here? You don't know. Okay. Okay. Fine. I'll concede. You know what you're doing. You're cyber stalking and you're threatening, and you're lying to people to try to cover for it. We know what you're doing, too. So? Okay. I know how to, I know how to play their game. I know how to make them look over here. We're, we're not playing a game. We're commentating on what you're doing publicly. We don't want to catch you. I don't need to catch you doing anything. <laughs> I don't need your secrets. I don't need to know what you do on a Sunday night or what you like to do in your living room. I'm concerned with what you're publicly posting. So is nonsense. Last time I checked, which was yesterday. Here while I'm doing over here. That's fine. We don't care what you're doing in private. We care what you're doing in public. We're not like you. We're not doxers. We're not obsessed with you. We laugh at you. You are very funny. You're very silly. You say crazy things. You're wrong all the time. You blatantly lie all the time. It's pretty hilarious that you think you're actually getting away with all of this and that's why we commentate on it it's like a little soap opera that happens in real time i mean it's almost like that's why the name of my show is days of our live streams or nights of our live streams it's like a soap opera that that once you criticize these people they are so narcissistic they start having insane un 
undescribable meltdowns that you can't predict beforehand because they go way further than you ever think anyone will. I know how to use them against themselves. Really? You know how to use me against me? Wow. I've never heard that one before. Thank you, Don. I got to think about this. She knows how to use Uni Rock against Uni Rock? No, that didn't work. God bless America. Hold on. And I don't know where. I moved one of my best songs, and I have such a hard time finding it now, and it's perfect for these kind of things. And I know this is like, I'm failing right now because like the more I look for the song, the less impact it'll have. But you know how to use uni rock against uni rock? Wow. <laughs> Dang. <laughs> you, you know a lot about me. You know more about me than I know about me then. <laughs> Dang. And they can't stand it because they can't do that to me. We can't stand it. No, we love this. Oh, hold up, hold up, hold up. No, no, no. We're not we're not trying to get you to do anything. We we don't have to. I think you're horribly confused. I, I you you may be describing what you're used to having happen, okay? Maybe this is what you're used to having happen when you deal with people online. We laugh at locales. We laugh at people who um now, what's the best way to describe it without really hurting your feelings? We laugh at people uh, who think they're smarter than everybody else when really they're not educated at all. It's called the Dunning-Kruger effect. You can look it up on Wikipedia. It'll be the easiest way for you to understand it. Basically, it means that you think you're an expert at something when it is completely obvious that you're not educated in it whatsoever. And you fall on your face every time. You tr Like every single time you try to run the race, you fall on your face every time you stand up, right? But you think you're an expert in running races. In fact, you think you're the world record holder in running a race. While everybody else is just running laps and you are falling over every time you stand up. Then you get to the finish line and you go, oh my God, I got gold. And everybody in the crowd is seriously just sitting there with their mouths open like, what the fuck? Get this person some help. That's how we roll, babe. <laughs> well, just because you roll around on the ground and just because you guys roll around, uh, you know, when you wake up and I'm stealing nonsense's line <laughs> because you, uh, you roll out of bed in the morning. I think that's what nonsense said. I'm stealing it. Um, you know, that's fine if you want to roll like that. <laughs> but thanks for the $2. You're welcome. And it wasn't threatening. I don't threaten people. You, you see, this is how a lie works, Betty. You go do something, okay, and then you lie about it later. Now, here's the beauty of this. Here's the beauty of what's called reality. We don't, you can say anything right now. You can say anything. You could eat a hot dog three days ago, and we could have it recorded and uploaded, right? And you can try to convince everybody for five years that it was a piece of pizza. We can go back to the recording, listen to it, and we know whether it was a hot dog, a piece of pizza, chicken legs. It's right in the recording, okay? So unless you're going to pull that recording and play it for everybody and explain how it's not a threat, very specifically, very truthfully, very honestly, and accomplish convincing everybody that you weren't threatening nonsense, which you will not do because you know you're lying you might as well just accept that you can't lie about this. Just like you're not going to be able to lie about the next video that we're going to play. I don't, I do not, I never threaten people. Red Bull Coffee and Crime. Oh my God. Hold up. I got one right here. I love the name of your channel. Uh, Uni for real. They are Smith. Uh, SMFH. Oh, shake my fucking head. Sad AF disgusting. I'm going through some randoms that don't like any of my opinions on Chiron case. They, they, uh, Pulled uh, something on YouTube and doxed me and my kids. It's gross. I feel for nonsense. Well, I'm so sorry that happened to you. And um, they do that a lot, you know. Um, what's happened is, is that they get adjusted to it. They've spent years on the platform adjusting their, uh, uh, getting used to their uh, method that includes threats and doxing, broad razors. Oh, let me give you an example. Molly used the Dob family name. 
to incite her audience to give money into her bank accounts. Now, she did this with zero accountability. She did it with um, no transparency. She doesn't plan on posting receipts. She doesn't plan on being accountable for how much money was given. And if you look at the flowers that she was trying to leave there, I mean, it's pretty obvious that Molly didn't post receipts, didn't track how much money was given, that she did 100% take in using the Dobb family name. Um, because she, I would say if I had to assign a probability to it, if you were to ask me, Uni, what's the probability that Molly spent a very, very small sum of money on some flowers and took in a large amount of money when asking people for Dobb money? I say it's about 99%. Because that's what happened with all these past cases like Letitia and all of them. You know, they, they lie when they take the money in and they use the actual victims, the actual case to get money. Now, there's another really weird coincidence involving that. So, leading up to her asking for people to give her money for flowers for the using the Dobb family to collect that money, she was stumbling around her house she was speaking in slurs she was having everybody else drive her around it's in and, and and you see i wouldn't have to i wouldn't bring this up if it didn't just happen when she was in the hotel e-begging if it didn't just happen during the Letitia situation if it hasn't happened many 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 times right oh my god sheree thank you guys make sure you remember you got to turn on that you accept gifted memberships so that you can get a gifted membership. Bitter Pill, Tails, Rachel Wolf, uh, Beer, I'm gonna say this wrong. Beerney, Ravencraft. I'm gonna call you Ravencraft because I'm really bad at that. Beer, Biney, Byrney. I will get it someday. I will get it someday. Um, but just so that we're just so that we're all uh, on the same page, okay? Molly, I gave Molly an ultimatum. Now, when she did the Letitia fundraiser, I said, Molly, never take money into your own accounts ever again in the name of a victim. Because if you do, you're going to be asked to prove that you didn't misappropriate any of that money. And if you refuse to, we're going to accuse you of a fraud raiser. The reason we can do that is because once you've proven to people that you will do fraud raisers... And you've proven to people that you won't be honest about the money you take in in the name of families. If you do it again in the future, we can come out and criticize you. And I don't think Molly's going to be happy, but it's coming. It's getting added to the list. I don't care if she just uses the Dobb family name to, take, to, to get to buy flowers, to get money in her account, to say she's going to buy flowers. I don't care if the next tragedy she uses that to try to get gas money. If she's going to use these victims' names to take money into her account, we're going to talk about it. We're going to track it. We're going to make sure she understands the issue. You're using these people that went through this mental health tragedy, and you're using their name directly to get people to send money into your personal accounts when she could have had them send the flowers straight to the, the, the funeral home, the police, or whatever. She could have sent them straight in, right? No need to take the money into your own personal bank account. It's ridiculous. Ridiculous. I just let them know. So, hey. Well, I'm glad you let me know, but listen, Betty, I'm going to tell you right now, I've been doing this show for a very long time. And I respect your rights when it comes to fair use. That's why I talk so much. It's why I pause so much. I know I could get a lot more viewers if I would stop running my mouth so much. I run my mouth to respect your copyright. I run my mouth to respect fair use. I give a lot of opinion. I make sure it's completely relevant. And I make sure that I'm respecting fair use. It's my right. You know it is. You may not like the rights that we have but you say you respect those rights you invoke those rights constantly so you do not get to say you don't get to come in and say that we can't invoke our right to do this how you doing give me a call babe doing pretty good you, you won't let me talk to you you won't talk to me 
Um, I've invited you to just to debate me on a debate platform. You won't do it. I've um, tried to get Molly to talk to me. She won't talk to me, and all she did was lie. Right? Remember that? Remember when Molly said that she was going to show me receipts after I went and talked to her, and she was going to talk to me again, and then she lied about it? So I'm sorry, but the more you guys lie, let me give you let me give you some advice. Hey, Betty, let me give you some advice real quick. Let me put the phone up to let me put the fake phone. Um, now make sure you don't choke the phone, okay? The phone doesn't need its neck choked, okay? But look, look, listen closely. Listen closely. I'm gonna give you some advice. <laughs> Betty, it's not gonna work. You're not gonna. You're not intimidating us. You're, you're not buff. It's You don't have big muscles. Uh, I don't know if when you were younger, uh, everyone who saw you said, Jesus Christ, she's going to choke my neck. Her, she's so intimidating, she's going to choke me. I don't know what happened. But we're allowed to joke. We're allowed to commentate. We're allowed to do this. This is our right. We are invoking our rights. You should respect that. You're not. Right. Give me a call. What are you going to do if, like, a bigger show starts to react to your stuff? Are you just going to start screaming that they're harassing you? Maybe that's your problem. Maybe you should educate yourself on what the difference is between harassment. Like, I'm talking, like, basic level. Maybe go take some classes because you don't understand this stuff. And someone who doesn't understand this stuff doesn't understand true crime. Fact. Nice to see you. Right? Nonsense. This woman is crazy. She's dangerous. She is not living in reality. If she was even touching her tippy toes into reality, I might say, you know what? Don't go to the police. Don't file a restraining order. Don't sue her. Okay. But did you just hear this woman? This woman just called you after doxing you viciously and threatened you and had the nerve to sit here and pretend as if she's the victim. She just darvoed you and Every, everyone else out there. She is darvoing like you wouldn't believe. She's darvoing so hard, and I know she's watching me and nonsense and everyone else, so I'm going to actually explain to Betty what darvo is real quick. I'm going to do a boring darvo segment. never do i had to stand up and walk around a minute <laughs> i'm just kidding y'all i'm just being i have to be funny man i have to be silly i have to make jokes i have to be funny while i'm talking about this stuff because i i can't believe what i just saw this lady is out of her mind darvo stands for deny attack and reverse victim offender okay the perpetrator or offender denies the behavior they attack the individual doing the confronting and reverse the roles of victim and offender such that the perpetrator assumes the victim role and turns the true victim or the whistleblower into a perpetrator. Betty just called after viciously doxing and harassing not just nonsense but her innocent mother. Not her mother doesn't even live with her. Her mother isn't around her. What what the hell does her mother have to do with this? You are victimizing that poor woman, the mother. Ridiculous, Betty. Your victims need justice. I'm not even playing. But you need to understand that this is a real thing. That you you should be able to call Betty out. Any normal person, you should be able to say. You just darvoed, and they would say, oh my God, I'm so sorry. I do not want to do that. Are you telling me I didn't just realize that I made you a victim of, of myself through my actions, and then I tried to make myself the victim and turn you into the perpetrator? That would make me feel horrible if I did that, is what Betty should be saying. Instead, Betty is trying to darvo, and if you need to understand whether someone's dangerous or not, you apply this concept. 
because when you darvo you don't just do it over these petty things online again petty things online are the things that led up to her threatening nonsense not the threat that's not petty okay so let me read this to you i'm gonna do it super fast so i don't bore you it's an acronym deny attack reverse victim offender it's a reaction that perpetrators of wrongdoing particularly so's sex o's but can be anyone who's um uh, victimizing someone else may display in response to being held accountable for their behavior tell me that's not exactly what she just did in front of you step by step piece by piece some researchers indicate it's a common manipulation strategy of psychological abusers and that's exactly what she's doing abusing nonsense she is trying to inflict abuse don't get it twisted this is abusive a lot of people that use the internet to go real life on their victims are abusing their victims they don't want to be labeled abusers people like the all things sassy run and the balls account all these other accounts i've been talking about they don't want this to be outed they don't want people to talk like this they don't want people to know they're doing this but never forget this also applies in r's in essays in many more uh in, in beatings right in physical beatings and things like this some researchers indicate it's a common manipulation strategy of psychological abusers an abuser denies that the abuse ever took place, attacks the person that was abused, often the victim, for attempting to hold the abuser accountable for their actions, and they claim that they are actually the victim of the situation, thus reversing what may be a reality of victim and offender. It's the easiest way for narcissists and abusers to cope with the fact that they're an abuser or a narcissist. It often involves not just playing victim but also victim blaming it's combining victim shaming victim blaming or even denial into playing the victim at the same time and it is very dangerous for a person that uses this in their wheelhouse of abuse it's very dangerous the acronym and the analysis it's based on are the work of psychologist jennifer fry the first strategy of Darvo denial involves gaslighting. She writes, Jennifer, I've observed the actual abusers threaten, bully, and make a nightmare for anyone who holds them accountable or asks them to change their abusive behavior, which is exactly what's going on. That this attack is intended to chill and terrify the doxing, the threats, right? Typically, it includes threats of lawsuits. Oh my god did i make her do what she just did no i didn't make her just threaten lawsuits i didn't make her just darvo nonsense she did it so just because i'm smart enough to actually research this stuff and bring it to you in a very entertaining live show i'm just kidding I'm just i'm just kidding doesn't mean that i'm wrong the attack will often take the form of focusing on ridiculing the person who attempts to hold the offender accountable. The offender rapidly creates the impression that the abuser is the wronged one. The victim or concerned observer is the offender. It can happen with ASU mom. It can happen with nonsense. It can happen with you. Figure and ground are completely reversed. The offender is on the offense, and the person attempting to hold the offender accountable is put on the defense. Example, excuse me, examples. The behavior of R. Kelly during an interview related to criminal proceedings against him for S.A. of minors. The behavior of former United States President Donald Trump in defending himself against S.H. allegations, as well as defending him in against allegation of his other wrongdoings. The Igdir Genocide Memorial Museum a museum complex, which promotes Armenian genocide denial. Okay, I'm not going to read all that because I'm going to get... Okay. Anyway, the main thing is to look at what the steps are and then apply it to what we just saw. Did she abuse and uh, throw abusive behavior to, to nonsense? Yeah, she threatened her. And on top of that, she doxed her and included her family in it. All of these things are, are not accidents of Betty. 
Betty needed to mention something attached to Nonsense's mother so that she worries about not just the mother, but any other family member. It's a message to Nonsense that her family is open game for Betty's BS. Also, bringing up the location is just showing Nonsense that Betty will go real life. And it's showing that she's willing to dig as far as she can and to go as desperate as she can. So again, if someone who has a potential for physically harming other people in felonious extreme ways will go to the extreme and is trying to send you messages that they're going to go to the extreme, you have to protect yourself by going to the police. Hope says I dubbed them Cruella DeVille because I'm not convinced they share a brain cell between the two of them. Thank you, Hope. And I completely get what you mean. Now, if I wanted to, I could I could just go through this whole thing, you know, and, and react to it uh, and react to it and react to it. But I'm going to try to do it the quick way because we have one more video to hit and I want to get out of here. Um, yeah, I can't go. I can't go on much longer. I told myself two hours max and we're almost there. Let's hurry up. Oh, by the way, she didn't answer the phone and it was and it was put on her voicemail. So I'd like her to have I would like her to play that for her audience. No threat. See, see how she's lying? Are you going to tell me that she doesn't know that Nonsense already did that last night? See how she... This is her manipulating her audience. She's telling these lies because she wants her audience to think that the only reason Nonsense played it was because Betty told her to. Right? She also wants them not to go out and look for Nonsense's stream last night. Doesn't want them to watch the stream from last night. Yes. No threats whatsoever. No, you did threaten her. You're a liar. Thank you for confirming for the numpteenth time that you're a liar. Remember, I, I know the law, right? You do, and you're breaking the living hell out of it. No threats whatsoever. Would never threaten anybody. Not by not by written correspondence, not over the phone. But I did. You did threaten her. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know how you think that's not a threat. So if somebody told you that they were going to do something bad to you and they said what you said to nonsense, you would be online calling it a threat in 4.6 seconds. If somebody did that to any of your friends, you would be up there screaming and hollering about how they're victimizing your friends and hurting your friends. You know it, I know it, everyone watching knows it, you said. Okay. Let me grab this video here. Well, G. Willikers, Batman, isn't it funny? It's almost like Molly uploaded a video of someone threatening her so that people in her audience aren't searching around for videos that say that Betty and Molly threatened nonsense last night. Gee, what's the title of my video? Molly and Betty dox nonsense by calling and threatening her. It couldn't be that she's trying to divert the traffic to videos that expose her to herself on something totally different, is it? Not another way to deny, lie, and abuse nonsense, is it? Now wait until you see this. I'm going to start with this timestamp. It was just the land of the free. Okay, here no matter what... Wait, it's guys, for so what? 14 so what? Okay. You just look at how scared Betty acts about the police. Because those police are looking for them. Those police are looking for them. Um, by the way, guys, have you ever seen a better thumbnail than this? Have you ever seen a more honest and to the point thumbnail then then betty reaching towards nonsense with her hands outstretched ready to go huh i'm telling you man my thumbnail skills are at an absolute peak i don't think i'll ever beat them again but every day i surprise myself uh fast forward to 225 225 i got my videos mixed up there. no i messed up my timestamp. well it was no, maybe I didn't. Let's find it. I gotta fix my damn community post. Okay. Maybe it was 1225. Maybe I just mistyped one thing. Period. Here it is, right here. 
Here we go. Uh, let's say fast forward to uh, like eight minutes. And where would you like these? Just put around? You notice how they start acting when they see the man walking up to them? You notice? Now, do you also notice that she is trespassing? She lies to the police. What? Now, I want to make sure so they don't say I'm lying on them. If the cops were to pull up later in this video and they were to tell the cops that they weren't in the yard, they would be lying, right? Peggy says best thumbnail on the planet. I agree. I'm sorry. I'm not trying to toot my own horn here, but toot toot. If anybody wants to no. Let's see if anything was left. I got oh so I got the Burger King hats for the other. Look at how many Burger King hats they stole from Burger King. So two of two of them go into Burger King. They come out with like a car full of Burger King hats. That's some cheap shit. Could you at least buy them next time? God, how cheap are you? I am carrying a Versace handbag, but I'm gonna rob Burger King of all their crowns. I swear it's not a fake Versace. Okay, there is our hero of the day right here. Here comes the hero. Okay. That's fine. No, if he, if he ain't feeling good, no, he needs to take some time and feel better because he was sick, so. All right, here we go. Here's the hero. Get ready for the hero to do his thing. Now, do you see Betty in the yard? Do I need to rewind it? I don't, right? It was right around 7.50, 7.48. Betty is on the property. She always cares about justice, but she doesn't give a shit that she just broke the law. Because they, after Molly played her games yesterday, they put up a no trespassing sign. And Molly and Betty saw the sign, looked at it, read it, and then stomped all over the yard. Thank you, K-Dub. And then notice what they're doing when they see that man walking up to them. They're trying to, you know, put on the act that they're there just for that memorial, right? Oh, I'm here to memorial, memorial. You know, they act like what they did yesterday doesn't count. They don't act like they said that they are allowed to walk in that yard. Molly said she's allowed to walk around and film that yard, right? So why is it there is a no trespassing sign up right after Molly left the yard yesterday? Why did they call the cops on Betty and Molly? Because they're breaking the law. And where would you like these? Just put around? Let me make sure I, I get my phone out and recording and I say this really loud. <sighs> yeah. Like, wait, it's like this? Right here? Oh my god, she's so cringy. One, and two. Are they on already? Um, not They're both in the yard. I know they don't care, because to them, they're allowed to break the law as much as they want, as long as they don't get arrested. Now listen, I'm not saying you can't go out and break laws, and I'm going to sit here and harp on you. <laughs> I ain't saying that. I'm saying they're the ones that go around harping about people breaking the law all the time, not us. I've already said, you're an adult. If you choose to do things that don't hurt other people, like, I don't know, if you want to get drunk, you want to do drugs and do all this stuff, you know, you got to learn your lessons, you got to figure your life out, you got to be you, you got to do your thing. I'm not here to judge you. But when you go out there, if you're going to sit there and tell everybody, don't do drugs, doing drugs is bad. If you do drugs, you're a horrible person. And then you're going to sit on stream and do a bunch of coke. I'm going to probably criticize you. I'm just saying, but make sure you get it straight. Not yet because they didn't get. Thank, thank you, Jazz. Oh, thank you. Oh, my gosh. I've never seen that one before. That one's cool. <laughs> yes, I, I took the buttons out. Ding. Get off the yard. You don't have to trounce all over the yard. They're trouncing on that yard.
because they know if they play the role that they're the, just there to put up a memorial that they can spit in these people's faces, this neighborhood's face, by rolling all around. Remember how Betty said that that's how they roll? Betty's rolling on the ground right now, trespassing. See, that one's... Okay, so they, they just turn right on by themselves. I'm going to sit and ask all these questions about these, even though I already know the answers, because there's a guy walking around watching us, and he's going to call the cops on us. And then we'll take this. So... You're in, okay, follow me here, people. So, Cause this is my last segment. I know I went a little long, but I'm gonna go off the air. Follow me here, people. A man who lives in this community knows that these people died and it's their property and that that property is still owned by the family, okay? Someone put up a no trespassing sign. He's being a good neighbor. He already knows the surviving family members want no one around the family's home after the tragedy. They don't want people there, so the family put up signs, and the neighbors are helping them enforce, because of the family experiencing a mental health tragedy of the most epic proportions, not one suicide, not two, but three. And I hate to do it, but I'm going to tell you what happened. A news report came out, and I'm going to play it for you once we get into the Dobbs stuff. And it said that the daughter had been experiencing extremely, uh, extremely bad hallucinations for years. And they got so bad that she couldn't live with it anymore. And that she had been talking about taking her own life for a while. And these, this, so the parents had to keep a close eye on her. They had to keep her... Home. They had to keep her medicated and protected from herself because in her hallucinations, in her mental illness, she was very likely to hurt herself. She'd been talking about hurting herself. She'd been threatening to hurt herself. She had talked about if she had to go back to the hospital, she'd hurt herself. All the things that you could possibly fear as a parent was happening to these two older parents. And after years of dealing with this, the daughter had kind of said, you're not going to stop me. I have to do it. And finally, the mother said, if you're going to go, I'm going to go with you. Father, wrote, now this all is from like diary entries and stuff like that and communication from the police to the, to the news. The father sat there realizing that his wife and daughter were going to take their lives. And he wrote how, how much he couldn't live without them and how hard this was for him and how he didn't know what to do until they all made the decision to form a pact to do it at the same time and leave this world together. Now, I don't want any of us to ever be in that position, but I'm not going to judge any of you if you're ever in that position because no one knows what it would be like. No one can judge. When we know by studying mental health that mental health can take somebody in an instant. Somebody could be normal right now. And due to things that are completely out of their control, the most healthy individual could just have something happen internally or externally, and it could make them go into the worst mental health crisis ever within a day or two, within a week, within a month, within a year. Sometimes it happens in an hour. It's so weird. Life is so strange. But what these two are doing and what they're saying about this family is so utterly disgusting that it almost trumps what they did to Dre and Marvon if they wouldn't have gone so far. I think it's at least equal to what they were doing to Dre and Marvon. Now, they would need to sit here and do this stuff to this family for a very long time before it would you know, be as bad as what they did to Dre and Marvon. But, it, but in the beginning of Dre and Marvon, they've done the same thing to this family. They're starting a narrative first that the daughter was, out, was, was evil. The daughter's evil, and the daughter talked the parents into doing this or killed the parents. No suicide pact, which means that the daughter had done this to the parents and drugged the bodies outside. And if you've watched me react to anything Molly's been doing with the Dobb family, you know what she said. But in this video, Molly is about to change her mind. Instead of the daughter being the evil bad guy, all of a sudden, Molly determines that the father is the bad guy and the father and mother were so controlling with the daughter and they had locked her up for so long that it caused this to happen. Now, again, that's just not true and I'm not going to let them lie about it. 
This is subject to change because it's very early in the investigation. But from what we know, it was the opposite. The daughter had to be monitored and maintained and and um, to, to keep her alive because of her mental health disorder. So the, the parents were not breaking the law or doing anything wrong or doing anything bad to the daughter. They were trying everything to make their daughter healthy, and they just, no matter what they did, it didn't work. That's the truth. Now listen to what Molly does. Well, after I go off on them for disrespecting this neighbor and this community, because again, the neighbor knows this. These neighbors know that the details now. The neighbors know that it was a mental health issue and that the two parents had to wrestle with their daughter threatening for years to end her life until they all did it together with her. It was them loving her so much that they wanted to be with her when she did this. It was, it, I know it sounds crazy. I can't, I can't wrap my head around it. That's what we know so far. Subject to change. And as soon as it changes, I'll bring it to you. Okay? Now let's see what these two disrespectful monsters do. You know, I don't think it's any coincidence that this guy comes up and starts telling them they're trespassing and Molly starts doing this really loud with the plastic right next to the microphone. He's doing this on purpose. That's okay, you cannot. So he is telling her that she's trespassing. That's a fact. That is a fact. There is a sign on the property that they're trespassing on saying that they're trespassing. He is telling them to leave. He's being polite about it. He's not been rude at all. It's rude of them to violate the law, violate the family's privacy, and be on their property when they've posted that they don't want people there. Wrong for them. Okay? Uh, you know, I'm, I'm with the media, and you can Now, Betty lies to him and says, I'm with the media. Listen to what she says next. This in my opinion, should get her in trouble. But that's my opinion. Listen to this. You cannot, you cannot report trespassing on the owner's behalf. They are so she's trying to convince this man that he cannot report trespassing on the owner's behalf, which, yes, he can. The entire neighbor, that's what a neighborhood watch is, for God's sakes. So, Betty, neighborhood watch doesn't exist. Neighbors more than can, can report anything they want in their neighborhood. They're paying for everything there. They're paying their taxes. They're paying their home payment. You don't get to tell them this. Who are you? Not only are you a doxer, not only are you a cyber stalker, cyber stalking nonsense and threatening her, but now you're going to go as far as to start violating everybody's rights in this community, acting like you're the queen of England here. Okay. okay. That sign says no trespassing. You don't have to be rude, sir. How in the Sam fuck is he being rude? He came up and said, okay, you just said, that he, so he didn't say this, but he's sitting here going, this woman just told me she's with the media and I can't report her to the police. No one, if anyone ever tells you you can't report them to the police, you should call the police right away. That, that, there's only one type of person who ever goes around telling people that they can't be reported to the police. Okay. Now, this man hears this and says politely, that sign says no trespassing. He says it politely. He says it calmly. Right? What did Betty just do? What do you call what Betty just did to this man? It's called Darvo. Betty is being rude. Betty is breaking the law. Betty is trespassing. She was just filmed rolling around in the grass next to a no trespassing sign. And yes, they're going to show the sign in a minute and you're going to be able to see where it is and what it looks like. So he nicely says this to her and she turns him into the rude one. She turns him into the bad guy. She turns him into somehow doing something inappropriate when he is, what is it? What is he doing? Exercising his rights in his neighborhood. Now, they start to ridicule him. They start, Betty starts to yell at him in the most hypocritical display from Molly in a long time. God bless you. 
God bless you. So that lady across the street says they didn't know him. They didn't know him. They're reported. They doing it. They're reported. They're reporters, not reported, reporters. But it's very similar to reported. Betty thinks she heard they're reported. They don't belong on the property. Putting stuff on, reporters know. don't leave. So then he says they're not. He says they're reporters. He's making fun of them. Now, remember, yesterday, they went up and told neighbors in this community that they are with the media. They are reporters with the media. Betty just held it up and said, I'm a reporter with the media. Listen to what Molly starts to say. They don't belong on the property. They don't belong on the property. Factual. Factual. You do not. You did not have to roll around on the property to put that stuff down. You could have gotten it ready in your car, walked it over very quickly and set it down close to the sidewalk or, or reached in and put it down in there if you wanted it to be in the yard. Because I'll be okay with you leaving a memorial if you're going to do it respectfully. I'm not okay with you leaving a memorial if you're going to act like this. I'm not. You should have stayed home. You should have not left it. A memorial. What is a memorial, Betty? Molly? It is a way to show respect to the people that you're memorializing. If you're going to disrespect the people that you're memorializing, then you're not really there. You're not really there to memorialize, to show respect, because you've already proven you're willing to disrespect. So why are you there? Why are you there pretending to memorialize the family, to create YouTube content that they can monetize and upload? That's why. There's, this is absolute proof. Again, the concept of memorializing would mean that they plan to be as respectful as possible. I mean, I don't care how far you go back in history. I don't care if this happened in, you know, 1400. I don't care if it happened in 200 BC. You know what I'm saying? Like, every human being's reaction is going to be the same to someone pretending that they're memorializing people while being disrespectful. They're all going to say... You just violated the memory of them. You are violating them and their memory while claiming you want to memorialize them. Your actions show you're not wanting to memorialize them. So I'm just making sure that there's no confusion here with my commentary or my point. You can't memorialize people that you're being disrespectful to. It's empty words. It's a lie. You, fo you follow me? Okay. Reporters don't leave flowers. What? Did you hear Betty or Molly? <laughs> okay, hold on now. <laughs> Yesterday, you both were reporters. Yesterday, you both had your press passes, your fake forgery press passes. You went and talked to a neighbor and interviewed him and tried to tell him all the things that you've done as reporters and everything, right? You were reporters yesterday. Betty just pulled out her press pass and said, I'm with the media. I'm a reporter to this man about a minute ago. Molly is saying they're not reporters. Reporters don't leave flowers. We are memorializers. When they don't need to be, this is how you know they're not really reporters, that those press passes are absolutely fake because they're not, they are only reporters when they need to be to manipulate a person. They're only reporters when they need to be to be able to get the content or money that they need. But the minute that it would behoove them, behoove Betty, the minute it would behoove them to not be reporters, they're not reporters anymore. Feel me? You following me? Do you got me? What are we doing to bother you? You guys see what I'm doing here? <laughs> the whole behoove thing, Betty just posted to her community tab. The whole got me thing, it was in the voicemail. Okay. Your trust pass and they it's just not your business. It. We're leaving. It is his business. It is absolutely his business. Now, if it's not his business that you're trespassing, it is not your business what is going on with these cases. You said that you have a right to know what's going on with these cases. This man has a right to know more than you do about those cases, what's going on in his neighborhood. He has a right to call the police on you. He has a right to tell you that you're trespassing and to get you in trouble for it. You're about to lie to the popo. You're about to be dishonest. You're about to make the popo think you weren't in the yard. You're about to make the popo think you were just, you know, being nice to this guy and he's being rude and you're about to play your bullshit games, but that's fine. Keep going. It's your business. It's none of your business. It is my business. You Get off there. People. They wouldn't want you there.
Now, the lady who lives across the street, who had lived across the street from them, the whole, the whole three years the Dobb family lived there. This man lived right up the street and around the corner the whole time that the Dobb family lived there. Everyone in this community says that the Dobb family would not want them there. If you care about the memory, you care about the existence of the people, if you care about anything about them, you would immediately leave and apologize. Wouldn't get mad. There would be no reason to get mad. So you have to ask yourself, I always say, when they lie, there's a reason. We know why she was lying about docs and nonsense, because she doesn't want to get in trouble. But why are they lying about wanting to memorialize the family? So, because it messes with the money flow. See? Their actions prove that they're tragedy pimps. People aren't being mean to them by calling them tragedy pimps. People aren't putting them down. They're accurately describing them. And in my opinion, they deserve to be called a lot more than tragedy pimps. They have never cared about the memory of any of the people they have done this to. They've never cared about anything but the money they can make off of their actions. And they know that these kind of interactions are literally what the people who support them are subscribed for. They, the supporters and the subscribers and the donators, want to see them clash with neighbors because it's like a form of reality TV. Regular reality TV, though, is more fake than this because regular reality TV, Hope says, are there any laws against fake reporters just saying people have been looking into it and already been reporting them, just so you know. They've been reported uh, to a lot of places in the last few days, I'm just going to tell you. Reality TV, though, is b more boring than this. It is not as real. And the reason is, is because, of course, it's a, it's a, a lot of it can be staged. Some, a lot of it's not, but then the ones that's not staged, like, there aren't as many extreme things going on. When it comes to these two, they immediately are upping the ante of reality television. No reality TV show would ever target people that had just experienced a tragedy because too many people would have the show canceled. No, any, no form of reality television would target victims in the same way for the same reason. And what these two are doing is trying to tap into an untapped market. But the reason is because that untapped market is so disrespectful to parts of our lives or humanity in general that if I don't even care if you're from like a different country or you have different customs or there's it, it's something that can unite us all as people across the globe. Anyone from any place that does this to people that have passed or suicide or murders are the scum of reality. And it's so crazy that Molly and Betty have no self-reflection and they have no ability to look in the mirror and see this about themselves. There's a reason people have to be on such strict behavior at funerals or when dealing with a victim or when dealing with these kind of situations. I can't, I can't like say it enough that I've covered cringy behavior. I've covered, uh, crazy behavior amongst so many subjects and a lot of those subjects aren't tied to something that's so blatantly obvious a lot of it is tied to something that's mysterious and that's why there's an opportunity for people to do what they do in this situation though there's no one that would that would disagree there's no way to be able to defend this if you're going to go out and do this stuff and you're going to behave this way it only takes the slightest bit of logic to be able to debunk the fact that they're there for the victim or the, for the family or for anything more than exploiting the tragedy. Get off their property. I am standing on public property right now. See, you just lied. You just lied, Betty. You were just rolling. You were on your knees and you were on your, your, your palms of your hand in the yard on the grass. Molly was filming you standing in the grass near you. I, that's why I called it out a little bit ago so that the audience would see that. Just so you know. Right now. No, but you weren't when I took your picture. Good. Oh, yeah, boy, yeah. I didn't even know he said that. Yes, sir, sir. I don't know if you're watching any of these channels, but if you want to upload that picture to social media, we would love to blast it around everywhere. Good God, oh, I want that picture. I'll wait here for the cops to tell you there's not a thing you can do about it, sir. Okay, so Betty just admits that 
she did trespass. Okay, go report the trespass then. I just took a picture of you trespassing. Well, go report me trespassing. There's nothing you can do about it. I'm not going to continue. If you want to see the rest, you can go watch it on the clip channels if you don't want to watch it on Molly's channel. I've gone over my time. I really do want to keep going, but I've already gone too long because there's a lot of people that have uploaded videos about nonsense. And I apologize for streaming for so long, but I honestly just lose track. I meant to go an hour and a half, and I'm almost to two and a half. So I'm going to get off here. I'm going to stop myself. If I don't stop myself, I will start talking, and the next thing I know, it's going to be three hours. Thank you for supporting me, but... I'm going to ask you guys a favor, if you don't mind, will you please go support Nonsense and any channel that is out there giving their opinion on what's happened, okay? Anyone that, that's out there defending Nonsense, because you're going to get some trolls that are going to upload videos and they're going to act like Nonsense did something wrong or that she wasn't threatened or whatever. And in my opinion, you should avoid those channels like a plague because they're just using Molly and Betty's tactic in a in a less um uh in a less serious manner so there's people out there who molly has been working with and colluding with to attack nonsense and even myself and i also think that betty might be responsible for that too i just don't have evidence for it i do have evidence that molly's been doing it though so make sure you understand i don't care that they're doing it to me this is why lb attacked me last night uh, on top of the fact that she thought she could get some views out of it, which is really pathetic considering she constantly tells people how irrelevant I am. It's really weird, isn't it? You're irrelevant, but I'm going to come in and not do any type of real content. I'm just going to try to get views off of your channel. It's really weird. If she, wanted, if she actually criticized me, by the way, I'd be fine with it. She didn't, though. Um, but I would like you to avoid the trolls and to support nonsense if you can, please. Uh, and also the channels that give their opinion on what's going on and do their best to upload commentary. And maybe if they're not used to it or if they are and they get their commentary up there, try to listen to it a little longer than you usually would. The longer you listen to a video, the more it recommends it to more people. Make sure you leave it a like. The more you like the video, the more it recommends it to more people. And I hope we keep building our community up because I think there's not just a potential for us to do the content that we've all been doing. I think we could all do some roundtable videos where we get together and talk. We pick a, we pick a topic, we talk about it, and we end the video after you know a set amount of time. I think that other topics, uh, other types of community discussions, like other um, non-true crimey stuff is what I'm saying. We, I just think that we can have a, a, a really good community that makes really entertaining content for everybody where we... Instead of doing what Molly and Betty and them do, and LB and them, where they try to take three or four people and five people, five different friends of theirs, and tell you to watch all of them, what I think we should do is support people no matter how many subscribers they have. No matter if they're a brand new channel, whether they have 100 or 1,000 or 100,000, I think we just go around and treat everybody equal, support the hell out of everybody. And we reward entertaining content and we reward good commentary because if we tip the scale and we start doing that, people that do the clickbait, they lose their power. The minute that YouTube is based on how good your video is or how good your commentary is, the people that do what Molly and Betty do lose their power. And if we can get that to happen again, I remember when I first started YouTube, everybody went out and tried to write the best, most funniest, most relevant wittiest commentary that they could and they tried to animate it and they tried to put it up with graphics and stuff because if they didn't there would be somebody doing it better that would get the views and when you have youtube exist when you have youtube exist um in the way i just described as i said people that go out and clickbait end up people just click out as soon as they cl click in if this is clickbait i'm out Keep that in mind. Keep it in mind. I feel that there is an energy flowing through. There is a change. A w the winds of change are blowing. The good thing is nobody gets to control it if it's not their way. What you do is, is you come up with a system that rewards the best videos. And that motivates the best content to be made. Because when you have a system that rewards 
people that tragedy pimp or people that clickbait, YouTube gets really boring. So let's uh, see what we can do, guys. Please go support Nonsense and the creators that have tried to uh, support her. See you tomorrow. Jersey, me too. I love the clip channels. I mean, I'm addicted. I'm addicted and I can tell everybody else is too. Uh, Villanova says, Uni, uh, I think MGL is talking about what she wants from Betty and then she'll be thrown away like the trash she is. I agree. Oh, I agree completely. Cherie, thank you for sharing some of the other channels. I appreciate you. Uh, Junebug for love, Betty brings out the worst in Molly. Who thought it was even possible? Oh, definitely. Definitely. Oh, Suri, thank you. I forgot. And if you want to support me, make sure you like and subscribe. And not just to this channel, Unirock2. You know that I got a Patreon and a PayPal and a membership and all that stuff. So if you want to do that, you can. And uh, thanks, you guys. Uh, I, I'm trying to shout everybody out. Junebug says, I'm new to YouTube, so I'm kind of shocked how and what goes on. But go look at my comments to Betty and about re-victimizing victims and exploiting them. Well, Junebug, I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you're starting to see what's going on. There's a huge amount of content. You don't need cable once you find YouTube. Podcasts become better than every crappy movie or crappy TV show out there. Save the best ones. So you go out and watch the best ones, and then you've got YouTube, you got podcasts, you got videos, and if you ever get bored, all you got to do is look for something new and it's there. And if you can't find anything new that's from today, you can always find something from a year ago that's really good. I watch, I'm, I'm watching um, It's a Gundam. Great channel. Real funny guy. Talks about all kinds of crazy stuff. Really good. Critical Drinker. Talks about movies and gives the most just awesome breakdowns of what's wrong with the current, you know, Hollywood and the movies that's going on. Nerd Roddick's really good. He's put out a couple really good videos lately. 8-Bit Guy, if you like old computers or technology, he uploaded a couple really good ones. Uh, man, there's just a heel versus baby face. Oh my God, he is killing me lately. His name is Heel versus baby face. Um, that's the channel name and it is really good. And go watch Red Letter Media. Go over old movies because it's really funny but i don't want to keep your time i'm outie i'm sorry i miss i want to keep talking to you and i love you but i gotta go ah.